Friends, welcome and thanks for joining us. We have a very special guest today in the name of Catherine Olson. And we're going to be talking specifically about one of Scientology's numerous, numerous scales uh, called the Tone Scale. So that's the meat of today's discussion. But for those who don't know Catherine, could you please introduce yourself, my friend, and give a brief background on who you are? Sure. So I was in Scientology for 29 years and I was in the Sea Org for 27 years. And I came out in June 2021 with the help of the Aftermath Foundation and with the help of a very close friend of mine. And I've just been living my life since and <laughs> learning how to drive, which I did right away and getting a job and being in the real world, which is just fabulous. I've done a lot of interviews. I did some on Chris's channel. <clears throat> I did one with Claire. I did one with Aaron Smith-Levin. Um, Poe on the go, and then me and Alex have done several, and we plan on doing some more. And it's I really, I really like this community, and I've made uh, I've made a lot of friends here, so it's really been something. Fantastic, and everyone, welcome. Yeah, please. Go. I was just going to say everyone loves you as well, Catherine. I mean, <laughs> um, everyone has. I've I've said I had so many comments on my channel saying when's Catherine going to be back on <laughs> no, she needs to be Catherine again and the videos that we've done are among like the highest performing that's ones great. I've done on my that's great channel. I'm glad I'm glad yeah. and I think it's helpful it's I know it was helpful for me like I talked about this in my interviews but I was actually watching interviews like this when I was still in the Sea Org I was watching this kind of well, stuff trying to like make up my mind about Scientology and Sea Org and the whole thing and it's very helpful to hear people talk about this stuff. So I figure if I talk about it, like I already helped somebody um, who was in the Sea Org and I helped him get out last year. And he, cause he happened to see my interview with Chris and he's like, oh my God, I know her. I want to talk to her. And then we connected up and he's out now and he's doing really well. So there you go. <laughs> it's Your story. I've, I've had a lot of ones like that. People just saying, you know, contacting me privately who are either still in or people who are thinking of leaving or whatever similar situation or people who have just left. And just like a UK voice is huge, right? Because yeah. there's not many of us on uh, on YouTube. So I've had quite a few people with similar thing, just going, you know, I, I can relate to your story in a way that I can't relate to the other stories. So the more yeah. people there are talking about their stories and experiences on YouTube, the better, because it just means that it, there's more opportunity for these videos to relate to more people right <laughs> yeah because it gives you all sorts of different viewpoints of what people yeah. experience and also what they're experiencing just being in the real world and it's very very helpful exactly yeah i could Don't. really talk forever about her story i just watched it last night and guys it really is amazing and it also gives us an insight as to how someone can be helped to get out i urge you definitely to watch her her videos and you're one of the newest people to come out Catherine. so first of all welcome to the real world i'm sure it's yeah. been a hell of an adjustment the last yeah. few years because you got out in 2021 i have so many questions but i know we got to keep it on the topic but please guys definitely check that out now what scientology is famous for is a series of scales and um charts and stuff that's mostly what Scientology is actually. And one of those scales is called the tone scale. And that's the one we're gonna be focusing on today. But just to give you some idea of um, you know how Scientology kind of works, the value of culture, it says purporting to be a new set of analytical tools to diagnose and overcome psychological hangups, but becoming a secretive multi-level religion slash celebrity cult, Scientology has long been invested in explanatory charts, diagrams, and schema. Probably the most recognized of these is a grade chart and on and on it goes, right? These are some of the early um, grade charts and scales. It's all about scales. And by the way, real quick, guys, one of the reasons we cover narcissists so heavily on the channel is because once you realize the characteristics of a narcissist, uh, you can kind of understand why Hubbard structured everything like a computer program. It's to remove emotions. It's to remove what they call human emotion and reaction and to basically turn you into a robot. So... Yeah. So I guess we'll start out with a definition of the tone scale because and, Scientology. And yeah, please. Scales. Um, and, this, is, this is the book that covers all the exactly, scales. exactly. It's really, like I have some things to have, but it's an entire book, and this is just covering scales. scales, all scales, right? Yeah. Yep. Not um, any of the confidential stuff, but anything that anybody can read. So right. we're all about scales. Definitely. 
Can yeah. I jump in here and just Please. do a bit of housekeeping before sure. we jump too far Please into do. the video? So firstly, hello to everyone that's watching from my channel. This should be streaming on mine and Doug's channel. So if you're whichever one you're watching on, go and support the other one um, and we can kind of help each other out. Um, Doug's channel isn't monetized. So any super chats or whatever, you won't be able to do that if you're watching on Days When Are Confused, but you can on mine um, and we split the the money but it's not exactly a lot of money it was like five quid or something a couple of weeks ago i think last week it was 10 pounds or something because after youtube take their cut it's not those but anyway because it's fair we split it um so any super chats you want to support the money financially come on to my channel do the super chats or whatever and you know we'll split it to make it fair um but yeah so i just want to say hello to everyone i'm excited there's lots of people that have said they want to hear about the tone scale i've yeah. had emails and comments you know, for the last, I've only, I, I've only been doing this for 10 weeks. I hit 4,000 subscribers. Congratulations, bro. And I probably had at least one message for each subscriber asking to do a video on the tone scale. So I'm actually really excited to do this. And I think, hey, oh, wow, you got 4,000 subscribers. Yes, he hit 4K yeah, yesterday. Yesterday, I hit 4,000 subscribers last night while I was exactly. on the call to Doug and you. Oh, great. Yeah. Congratulations. But, um, yeah, thank you. you um, but it. yeah, so that's housekeeping out of the way. Also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. That helps push the video out to more people. Algorithm-wise, if you, if we're live and there's people in the live chat commenting, um, the more sort of activity that happens in a short space of time, YouTube thinks that this video, therefore, is engaging and people are interested in it. So it will push a notification out to more people to say that we're live so um if you comment and get involved that just helps helps grow the channels um and now i'll stop rambling about youtube algorithms. thanks for saying that, that though. I, I appreciate <laughs> i hate saying that stuff alex so i really appreciate you saying that and getting it out of the way and it does help guys also another, uh, a user had a brilliant idea about if you really want to help just beam it uh, on your television from my channel. And then with your cell phone, follow the chat. You can do the super chats and such. such. And either way, um, I will pin your questions here. I can set them aside. Super chat or not, we'll try to answer all of your questions. So please feel free to ask as we go along because I don't want to give anybody an MU or misunderstood word. And when, this, when ex Scientologists get together, we have a tendency to possibly start rambling like Scientologists. So please let us know if you guys don't understand anything as we go. Our First, conversations that we have, just you and I, Doug, or, and Catherine as well, the conversations you and I have. If there was like, if someone was a fly on the wall that wasn't a Scientologist, I reckon they probably would be like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> it's <laughs> so we, fun to get it, together it like with exes language. and start talking um, like that so on purpose. We will try and sort of define everything and you know, take it easy. I think this is a good way sure. of starting is like really from the basics. And I think the idea for this video is we'll talk about the concept of what exactly the tone scale is, and then go into like exactly how it's used and what its implications are and how it's used as like an emotional manipulation tool, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yes, definitely. Whether people know it or, or not, or are intentionally doing that um so yeah bear with us and if there's something you don't understand or want us to explain just we've got the live chat we can see comments on either channel like both yeah. we can all see the comments from all channels streamed um in front of us so excellent and also you bring up a key point alex one of them this is the dictionary from scientology that you guys see and there's probably a couple thousand words uh, in scientology and that's a huge part of setting you into this new reality and to stop thinking in english words less and less and to be able to only think within the group dynamic using these words. And within a week or two, you can start talking complete gibberish, uh, learning these words because you have to look them up all the time. And that's a huge part of the mind control. A redefinition by words. We'll do a separate video on that in the future. Now, even what, the fact that Scientology has its own dictionary, like I I've, know, well, how many, cult, how so many cults crazy. have that? There, not used a, not a, a, there used to be the admin dictionary and the tech dictionary. And that's actually, right. Good point. Actually, what they're using these days, there was. I think the tech dictionary is still around. Like they're kind of still around, but they're trying to phase into using um, just the just the glossaries, like the glossary from the new student hat. Really? And yeah, they're trying to because they're 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 trying to phase out those those dictionaries. How come, it's Catherine? Going to be, um, I think because they they um, <laughs> they changed a bunch of definitions of things, <laughs> like they because uh, it's the whole thing like like ever since ever since 2013 when you had you know golden age of tech 2 and they started they issued all like all new 
they changed a bunch of a, a bunch of the former technical bulletins and that's right miscavige's they even got rid of the saint hill special ones. briefing course and they supposedly did um they supposedly did this whole project where they they defined everything um on the student hat like the student hat glossary is the most supposed to be like the most comprehensive of glossary that there is oh wow um but it takes words like even just usual words and just like makes makes them fit into whatever concept that that he's talking about and you're like i can't find this definition anywhere else this definition only exists in this glossary it's really what a mind odd. f yeah. it's even more of a mind f it totally is now you know what's, what's a big mind f for me right now is how much you're playing around with these videos graphic settings <laughs> i'm just <laughs> hey man it's exciting to get to, I'm, I'm getting better at this thing and it's cool to be able to pull up the things and hey man we have to define everything right so i have to be able to access these yeah, right? so in typical scientology <laughs> just funny to listen to catherine and just see us jumping around this hey hey i've what never done a three-way before no pun intended but i i'm trying i'm it's hard to figure out how to wow. get quickly everybody yeah <laughs> We, sorry, we're live. We can't erase that. Um, <laughs> I'll go into the editor afterwards. But it's oh, hard to figure out how to get us all three to go down at the bottom here. It's the came out. Let me put it in there. Oh, my God. Alex, I thought we were going to keep this to just a bromance, but <laughs> Catherine has entered our way. Yeah, so, you're going to you're gonna have to chill on the bromance. Bro. Apologies <laughs> in advance. <laughs> we have a lady in the house, no, Alex. Stop it. 2D flowing me. Catherine, okay. What? What yeah. was it you said to us on the, I, I don't know if you want to share it publicly, but I thought it was hilarious what you said yesterday about how you thought about my bro, me and Doug's bro oh, yeah, You said something there, that was sure. really funny about you find it entertaining. Do you remember what you said? You don't want to share it. Hopefully she doesn't. Way. What I said? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you guys were talking to each other. Oh, no. I was saying. <laughs> I, paying attention. I, I was saying about how, how say? funny it was what you said yesterday about what you thought about Doug and I's bromance. I don't, I don't remember what I said. Thank you, God. You I don't recall. You find it highly entertaining, but slightly yeah. disturbing at the same highly, time. Yeah, highly entertaining, but slightly disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent way of putting I mean, it. I don't care. You guys can do what you want. Just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, so since we since we Free moving world. right along, since we define everything in Scientology, let's get a definition of tone scale, shall we? A person in apathy rises through various. None of this is true, by the way, guys. And these are kind of NLP tools and, like I said, reprogramming no, tools. So we're not promoting Scientology. We're just going to break it down from the viewpoint of when we were Scientologists and how we use this. And What's we did NLP? believe this. Neurolinguistic programming. It's oh. a way the ARC triangle would fall under that. It's a way of getting you. We'll pull up a definition of that later, but it's a, it was one of Hubbard's specialties once he learned it. came out in the 70s. Yeah. A person in apathy rises through various tones. These tones are quite uniform. One follows the next, and people always come up through these tones, one after the other. These are the tones of affinity, and the tone scale of Dianetics in Scientology is probably the best possible way of predicting, i.e. controlling, what is going to happen next or what a person actually will do. Not true. I know. That's why I gave it. That's why I gave a caveat. Please, guys, don't believe this. This is just what they say. The tone scale starts well below apathy. In other words, a person is feeling no emotion about a subject at all. On many subjects and problems, people are actually well below apathy. There, there, the tone scale starts on utter dead. No okay, we're going to lose people here, but there you go uh, with that one. And by the way, just because it's right above here, and everybody wants to know what the heck tone forty is, because it comes up a lot. This is the highest scale level you can be uh, on the scale. And tone 40 is called serenity of beingness, which kind of conflicts with what this definition actually says. But Scientologists are infamous for being tone 40, using tone 40 intention to get something done with people. Now, of course, tone 40 isn't yelling. It is. It is simply the degree of intention you can put into some of this. It's the amount of intention. Now you radiate that intention if your expect expectancy is good. You don't have to be loud and haughty or anything of the sort. It's just the normal action, but your ex expect expectancy on what you say and so on can have a fantastic effect. This is how staff members and Scientologists treat each other, where you see the thousand yard stare and they're kind of, you know, very intent on getting something done. Anyways, so that's it on, on at least introducing it. Anything that you guys like to say before we carry on? I think just from a sort of non-Scientology perspective, um, a really easy way of explaining it is, um, in context, is that like the tone scale is a way of like tracking people's emotions. And the whole thing is presented as an 
as a reason why someone behaves in the way that they do. Um, it's trying to track emotions in literally like an almost mathematical scientific way of, you know, a step by step. If you're happy and sad, you don't just flick between those emotions. You go through a journey and a process. Right. And that's natural. And what the tone scale is, is a way of like clarifying and defining what that process is and kind of saying it's a rule that you go through it in this sort of order rather than just kind of flicking between emotions um but what, but what that does is it defines these things that are a bit more transient and a bit more loose and um so on than, than scientology make you think and it's it ends up becoming a way of manipulating someone because we'll all get into it but when you try and define something like an emotion, it becomes really tricky because there are some things that are, you know, are deliberately a bit cloudy in definition because everyone feels and experiences emotions in a different way. Um, and this just kind of, this tries to bring it down into a scientific type way, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's a tool of ma manipulation. Another, another thing about that is, um, is one of the things they like to say, is you know don't be low toned or exactly. you're being down tone or that's that's a that's a low tone thing to do or that's a low tone this or low tone that like like it's not like it's 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 not acceptable to be you know below like anything less than cheerful and happy and you're like but but then if you're too cheerful then you're being you're being uh, and I don't know what the what the equivalency of Pamby Wamby or Namby Pamby according to KSW? Weedy Weedy. Weedy Weedy. There you go. Blah, blah, blah. Like like nothing's wrong. Everything's great. Do, do, do. And then so you can't be too happy, and exactly. you can't be you can't be uh, sad, or you can't be you know angry or upset or serious because then you're being low toned. But what's funny is that like level that Scientology makes like sets as kind of okay, right? Not too happy, not too sad which you would think is kind of normal to non-scientologists that level is like creepily happy <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. true you know like exactly. people talk about when you go into scientology org and everyone just seems really happy and like cool and you know yay yes. that yeah. is the normal yeah. level and right. that is not seen as like too happy that's seen as where you should be <laughs> yeah. but exactly. in context of the wider world it is a bit too much <laughs> Yeah, it's fine to be enthusiastic or happy about something if you actually feel that way. Yeah. But you're supposed to like, you know, artificially manufacture yeah. this yes. weird enthusiasm or happiness for like everything you're doing and not be downtone about yes. things. And there's even there's even uh, I've I've studied quite a bit um on the uh people aren't really going to know you guys will know what this is but the advanced clinical courses and the congresses it's just a bunch of lectures it's like hundreds and hundreds of lectures that that he gave and there's there's one thing on there that i remembered which is one thing i remembered i remembered a lot of things but this is one of the things i remembered which is that um supposedly if you if you're below 2.0 on the tone scale which we'll talk about the different levels but if you're below 2.0 and you make a postulate it doesn't work like if you decide that you that something is going to happen and you want something to happen, it's not going to happen if you're if you're too low toned. <laughs> it's all so confusing. I know. It? It's it's just such a mind trip looking back at this, going, "How did I believe all these contradictory ideas yeah. and hold them in my brain at the same time?" I know. I know. Do you guys want to see a little bit of this, Alex? I talked with Alex earlier. I don't want to get if we get hit with the copyright strike when we're doing this live, they'll actually boot. They'll shut the stream down. So I'm going to show you a little bit of Scientology's promo and pause it as we go. Just um, it's only two minutes, but just to prevent this from getting taken down. But let's give in Scientology, there's a concept of giving the mass, meaning if we just talk about it, even showing you slides and ramble about it, um, we're lacking mass. So let's get some mass on it by showing you a visual of what the hell we're actually talking about here. <laughs> Sorry for the, Sorry for the long explanation. The Scientology is strong in this one and it's coming back. Okay, check this out, guys. <laughs> Another thing to notice about their videos is Scientology. Alex wanted to be in their division where he made these videos. And at Gold, they have, and other studios, they make these really slick videos that look just like what you see on television. So yeah. um, it, that's also part of, like, making it seem, it's actually totally empty, but they do have beautiful ways of, uh, you know, creating promo pieces. Check this out, guys.
One of the most crucial factors in achieving success in life is knowing how to handle other people. At times, the unpredictable nature of human behavior can make this seem difficult or even impossible. But if you had a tool that would identify the various human emotions and help you to understand the behavior associated with them, this would become quite simple. In Scientology, we call this tool the tone scale. This scale. Can I so, emotion? Sorry, yes, tone. please. Pause a sec. Sure. Just like Perfect. already, I just find it hilarious. Like, well, not hilarious, but interesting to look at it from a different perspective because mm -hmm. what they've already done is presented a Scientology principle or concept in a way that kind of makes sense, right? Yes. Like, there's nothing they've said so far that you could disagree with because That's it right. says, like, wouldn't it be better if there was a way of, like, doing this, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, well, yeah, it would be better. Exactly. It, it hasn't actually said that this is the answer. It hasn't said, like, right. the tone scale. Right, leading like, questions, leading questions. They'll get, to, they'll get to that point of, right. like, saying this is the tone scale and this is the answer. But already they've got you thinking, yeah, I can agree with this. This is they're a, asking uh, you questions you can't disagree with. Like, that's a great, great be point. Better? Or and wouldn't it, it be great if this was the way? Do you get what I know? It's I, I'm so there. sorry to interrupt. That's just, you just got, you, that's a, such a key point again that you make all salesmen do that. And that's what Scientology specializes in. Isn't that a technique, Alex, where if you're trying to sell something to someone, you don't hit them with it right away. You get them three or four questions that they can logically easily agree with. And then you add the fourth one on. And in fact, he even taught us that in Scientology. That's a technique on how to sell. That's a great, great point. Cause you're right. They're not telling anything about it. They're just saying logical things that you can agree with. And as we keep going, you'll see what they tagline it with at the end. Catherine, were you going to say something? Oh, oh, sorry, please. Oh, I was going to say they also. He also likes to say at the beginning of some some uh, policies and bulletins and stuff. He'll say he'll like give a a, a a a world situation or something thing people run into, and then oh, thank you. It's so true. I noticed that sorry. about your interview, Catherine. You seem like a beaming ball of sunshine, and you've only been out for freaking two it's years. I, mean, I, I was it's like lighting. horrible. <laughs> no, your demeanor, your demeanor. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So yeah, so he likes to say, um, like, come on, like, like, like present something as like a problem and then say, um, people, you know, there's never been a solution for this before. And we found the solution, you know, in, in, in all of, of man's thousands of years of existence or whatever, there's never, this has never been solved. And, but we found the answer and like, and you're like, huh? Okay. And that kind of like, sort of tries to lure people in as well you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i found that really powerful you know you reminded me of the very one of the first policies we always read the infamous ksw which stands for keeping scientology working and this is one of the things that he just comes right out and hits you with and we have to read it a thousand times in the cult we've discovered technology that's never been discovered before make sure you apply it correctly the world depends on it they're so bold and bald face of claims that that had an electrifying effect on me. And that was part of why I, I bought into it as crazy as that sounds. Did you have the same thing, Alex? You know, he was so yeah. bold. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think what's interesting is that, um, and this is what I'm trying to explain to people who aren't in Scientology or weren't in Scientology. You don't get that level of commitment and certainty in the very, like this is a public video that's available on the Scientology YouTube page and on their website. And they're not as bold in what they're saying deliberately, right? They're kind of saying, wouldn't it be great if this was the thing? And if you notice, they said in Scientology, we call this the tone scale. It's kind of presenting it as like, this is our, interpretation of it and this is kind of what we think and what we believe and it's all presented as kind of like not really that offensive and nothing really you can disagree with and that's how they start getting you into Scientology yeah. because they kind of present it and going well I've heard that the tone scale is a way of manipulating emotional behavior and in this video they're kind of going no we just call it this this is what the tone scale is this is you know it's this is like how you can use it yeah exactly like you can use it this it's, it's it isn't like it isn't it's never it's never going to be presented of like well this is how we use it against you this is how yeah. you can use it exactly yeah
Anyway, sorry, carry on, Doug. No, that's yeah. they're all great points, and please interject along the way. These are really, really key. And Ted, you're not late. We just started. Um, we've been going for gosh, already 24 minutes. It's amazing <laughs> how quickly this freaking goes. It's true. Okay, yes. so that was perfect, though. So I think you helped us with the copyright potential copyright strike, Alex. So I can probably roll through the rest of this. It's only a two minute and 41 second video. Every person and assigns numbers to help delineate them. These emotional tones have predictable patterns. For example, did you ever try to talk to an angry man? Someone who is angry doesn't listen to what is said. He may even lie about what happened, or at least twisted the facts. And more than likely, you feel worse after you talked to him. Upon examining it, you will find that all angry people have these and other attributes. By the way, Alex, I just wanted to stop and point out what you had just said. We're agreeing with everything he says so far, right? These are very logical things. Of course, we've had people get angry and then we walk out just like this gentleman. It's yeah, but, so, sort of. But to say that to say that uh, that that all angry people lie or all angry people don't tell the truth. That's yeah, that's that's not. And we're going to get to that, too, true. because you guys are tracking so far that maybe did he say something about lying there, Catherine? Yeah, because he said uh, an angry person doesn't always tell the truth or mm -hmm. might lie. An angry person might lie. Yeah. And, and it's presenting it as like he's in is he's making assumptions already mm -hmm. like you know angry people lie and this is blah, blah blah so therefore this is the solution they don't actually they don't strip it back enough to be like well hold on this is presented as a solution based on these assumptions you know you can't just make facts up based on assumptions that yeah. you've made right right and that's all scientology is i'm going to take it back from that point because i didn't catch that so we're agreeing with everything he says so far but maybe this is the first uh snag he may even lie about what happened. They handle the situation wrongly. This can have consequences for oneself and one's relationships. By knowing what emotion you are seeing and what emotion you should in turn express, you will be able to communicate in any situation, no matter how difficult. See, okay, can I stop there sure, again? Please. Sorry, right? No problem. <laughs> Dude, no problem. Jump in we whenever you want. We're going to be on the stream for a long time if I keep doing this. I'm sorry. Who I'm cares? Fine. We're not but in any hurry, man. Already, like, what emotion you should be feeling. I was it's just thinking the same. Right. Exactly. exactly. And by the way, emotion should come naturally, right? You shouldn't be sitting there like a computer program trying to manipulate this person with what emotion should I be feeling. And when we get into the chart of human evaluation, guys, we're going to show you just how precise this and manipulative this really is. It's exactly what I was thinking, Alex. Sorry this to interrupt. Thing. It, it, it's presented as, you know, it, you never take a minute in Scientology to think about what is right and wrong and who's... who's I know. We have a great chat, man. I'm going to throw up some zing zingers if you don't mind. That's funny. People Linda. probably think I'm laughing at what you guys are saying. I'm laughing at the comments. It's good because this is a comical thing we're talking about. It destroys lies, but we need to laugh about it to take yeah. apart its insanity and hold over people, you know? Probably. Please, Alex. You're making a good point, man. Um, I can't remember where I was going with it. It was something along the lines of like the emotional tone scale is... Oh yeah, that was it, right? It, emotions are things that are natural and different for everyone, and there isn't, there just isn't a exactly. right or wrong way to act or feel about something, exactly. right? It is completely okay to feel, you know, upset. How you feel yeah. about something right. that you, you know, even in your head, you might think, oh, I shouldn't like. Why is that upset me? That shouldn't upset me. It's kind of a stupid thing, right? That we've all had situations like that, and that's okay to feel like that, but it doesn't mean that it's actually wrong to feel a way right. that you in your head don't think is the correct way to feel about something because there is no correct way. It's correct yeah. to feel any way about anything, right? According to you, that's like you're the one that's feeling the emotion, and it's okay to accept that and be like, I feel this way. Um, yeah. and there's never a point where you think about it like that in Scientology. They're saying in this video already about like, you know, by doing this, you can learn how the correct way to to um, react to something is. Well, there isn't a correct way to act about something, there right? There is it's according to Scientology. According to the church is correct according to what Elron Hubbard says, but mm -hmm. that it's never presented in that way in your mind. So you never like, you never look at it as, well, it's correct according to him. 
it's presented as this is the correct way. So you just don't make that link in your head. It creates that sort of separation almost. Yeah. It's so remarkable looking. I don't even, this is why previous indoctrination, the TRs and stuff like that are kind of necessary because I think I would have noticed these discrepancies if my critical thinking are already wasn't being shut down. Cause these are so childlike. The errors are so obvious. You know what I mean? Do we have somebody feeding back in the background? I, I, I know it's not on my end. Is that you, Alex, or Catherine? And can you guys uh, oh, it's hear fine. it? it I okay. heard something for a second. It seems to be gone. Okay. Okay. So, that excellent. Continuing on. And let's see if we can discover any other in, in, uh, lies if they slip in here. The tone scale is of enormous value in life and in handling interpersonal relations by taking the mystery out of human behavior. I wanted to go back to that angry part. Behavior. By you will be able to any situation of enormous value. Where the hell was it? Remember that guy was, you it know, was Matt? before this. Okay, let me find was, that. Yeah, it was way before this. Oh yeah, we didn't even get very far, guys. And it's already full of shit. Okay, so here we go, right? Here. Yeah, because it's all about suppressing your emotions. That's exactly what it is in one sentence. Example. Did you ever try to talk to an angry man? Someone who is angry doesn't listen to what is said. He may even lie about what happened. Or yeah, that's not true necessarily. At least twisted the facts. And more than likely, you feel worse. He hasn't necessarily twisted the facts just because he's getting angry. After you talked to him. Upon examining it, you will find that all angry people have these and other attributes in common. So they all lie, according to Scientology, all angry people, and they're likely not to tell the truth. People are not fixed in one tone. They move on the tone scale in response to the conditions they face in life. This can happen rapidly or over a long period of time. Many difficulties in life trace back to not understanding the nature of these emotional tones and how to deal with them. For instance, you've probably seen someone who was cheerful or enthusiastic receive bad news and then go into grief. Someone who can't identify the different emotions won't know how the person is going to react and may handle the situation wrongly. This can have consequences for oneself and one's relationships. By knowing what emotion you are seeing, and what emotion you should in turn express, you will be able to communicate in any situation, no matter how difficult. The tone scale is of enormous value in life and in handling interpersonal relations by taking the mystery out of human behavior. That's so psychopathic, by the way, just listening to what he says, it's literally built for a sociopath. Who doesn't know how to read emotions? It's pretty damn easy and to know how to read and respond. Isn't that a crazy video? Yeah. Also, look at the way that it presents it, right? He's saying if you if you don't understand emotions, then you won't be able to react in the right way. You don't know how someone is going to behave. Well, he's basically saying that you, the important thing that you should try and do is be able to predict how people are going to react and behave in certain situations. It's like, well, yes, you, know, so you can act in a certain way. Yeah, it, he's that literally like talking about understanding people's emotions so in a way that you can manipulate them or a way that you can control them like it, why does it matter how you think someone is going to react to something what it's not important what's important is whatever the thing that you're talking about is or whatever the situation has happened and how that person feels not how that person is going to feel in a second right in reaction to this and this and yeah. that or, or how can I, like, it's fine to make people feel better if they're upset or try to, like, lighten somebody up or whatever, but you don't, but sometimes it's inappropriate. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, okay, someone's having a loss or they're experiencing something and they're like, and they, they need to experience whatever they're experiencing. It's not your, it's not, it's not your, like, job to, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, they're in a lower tone. I have to, I have to, I have to bring them up. Like, it's fine. You can, not to say you not to make people feel better or feel happy, but sometimes it's inappropriate. Yeah. That's the thing is he's talking about this as a, in a way that makes sense of like, well, look, if someone's angry, then by understanding emotions, you can, 
you know, take charge of the situation and react in a certain way and resolve the matter. But at, he's not putting it in a situation like Catherine was just saying of like, well, if someone's experiencing loss or something, part of the grieving process is like, ex like sitting in those emotions for a minute, right? And actually understanding them and accepting them and like processing it in your head and like accepting that that's the way you feel. And that's part of that process. But in Scientology, it's more like, well, you're low on the tone scale. So we've got to try and get you up because you've always got to be at this level of yeah. happiness or whatever. Um, Doug, have you shared that, the super chat that we got from Goldie? Goldie. Oh, my bad. I was, thank you Goldie. so much, Goldie. Goldie, thank you for the super chat. Um, it's very nice of you. Um, she just said, because I can't star them or anything, but she just said, we love I'll, I'll Catherine, up talking. And yeah, I'm speaking for the whole channel on both channels. Oh, thanks, Goldie. I like her. She's really cool. I don't even know if it'll let me pull the damn thing up. Like, I see the super chat at the top, but um, I don't see it in. You, yeah, you have to, when it's in the, when you have to see it in the live chat on the right, and then you have to star it from there or whatever you can't just click on the thing at the top it won't let you add it to the screen that way no i know but it didn't show up in the chat you know with the little sticker and everything probably because my channel isn't monetized but you call them out for me and i'll i'll announce it okay yeah cool. yeah oh look at that I, um, I, can't, I can't put this up but somebody said Catherine baxter oh hi Catherine. just tell me i'll pull it up the original tone scale book oh like, right i had that star actually how to, choose, how to choose your people interesting that's right. I wanted to ask Catherine about that because I believe that the tone scale came out in Science of Survival first, did it not? And that would have been 1951. So yeah. um, what, what Catherine, I think, was talking about there, I got to go way back in the comments to pull it up, but I did have it start. Is that that, Catherine, was that like a course that they kind of offered for newbies or you know how they would always take a main course and then they would yeah. make little booklets and stuff out of it? Was that kind of what it was called? Because I had it, never, I never heard of that before. It, it sounds like it could have been I don't know if you're asking her or me, but no, <laughs> it, please sounds like, it. it sounds like it could have been a, a very early course. How to super. choose your also, people. Also, they do these like I've seen a lot of little booklets done over the years of on like tone scale and. Various. Yeah, exactly. So, I wonder if that's what Catherine's referring to, because yeah. I have two. They'll take the tech and then make it into easel, easy bite sized pieces for people yeah. that they can yeah, don't exactly. scare them away with Scientology and just give them something like, hey, you ever want to know how to choose your people? Here's a book, friend. Yeah, and all, that also also links to this, right? The video we just played, which is all about the tone scale, and it's Scientology's introductory publicly available video about what the tone scale is. It doesn't actually tell you what the tone scale is, <laughs> right? Right. It gives right. you examples of like, you know, it's important to understand people's emotions, and like they're giving examples of how to apply the concept of the tone scale. And at the end, it kind of shows a graphic with like numbers on it and emotions and pictures. But the video doesn't actually explain what the tone scale actually is, right? And that's a marketing right. tool because they want you to kind of agree <laughs> with it Pretty and much. go like, yeah. What? Did you huh? see this call? Angry people also cuss a lot. That seems to be very. That people. is true because <laughs> there's a lot of frustrated people in Scientology trying to use yeah. this manipulation technique. Yeah. There is a lot of. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Alex telling your 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 senior? Who's yelling at you that that they're probably they're probably lying or they're twisting the truth because they're angry? <laughs> it just wouldn't. We you know you'd go straight to ethics. <laughs> this but, whole um, thing is mad. No, By the think... way, I can show super chat. So Goldie, I don't know why I couldn't find it. There's a whole bunch of comments, so I'll star them as we go, guys. But I can pull them up. So thank you very much, Stacy. That's just what spending... I'm trying to explain is like well, you have to catch it in the live chat. And oh, then I see. It. I got and then, it. and then you can leave it. Like you, once it's in the live chat, star it. And you don't have to answer it straight away. Got it, brother. And then when you go into like starred, it's easier to find them. If that makes sense. But you can't like bring it up from the little thing at the top. You have to catch it in the live chat. Thank you, man. I got it. So yeah, Stacey, thanks. We really appreciate it. Just saying an encouragement to you all. Keep not peep, but I like the I like the uh, peeps. Keep growing your channels and sharing the experiences. Keep it going. Thank you very much, Stacey. This is cute. thank you. Terry yeah. Ray, my my day has been made. I'm I made Catherine laugh. <laughs> Catherine, cute. you're easy to make laugh. You are a <laughs> bubbling know. ball I of freaking everything. sunshine. What is your secret to, to <laughs> post Scientology success? You got to write a book on that, man. Because I yeah, came out. I, I had several people tell him tell me I should write a book, but it's. Oh, I'm sure you will. So anyway, it'd be very. It's kind of a complicated. My story is more complicated than people realize, and I'm not gonna. 
Get even more stuff. reason to write a book maybe but it's up to <laughs> you i th- i think so many people i think everyone almost with a scientology story has a book in them because even though scientology is meant to be this one thing that is applied in the like in one way that means the same thing for everyone it's scientific and it applies you know it still has a different effect on different people like everyone's mm-hmm. story is different even though there are things that are similar yeah. i think everyone's got a book in them um in Scientology particularly. Definitely. I mean, I haven't even told all of my story. Like, there are huge chunks of my story that I haven't made public yet. Some deliberate and some just because, like, it hasn't come up yet. And it's like, like, how many people are speaking on YouTube already and have done hundreds of hours of videos and we actually haven't touched all of the bait? Like... Anyway, that's a whole different point. Uh, yeah, this is true. Which is Stacey, Stacey Y, yes. it's good to hear you all laugh knowing what you have come from church of scientology people seem so serious it's true it's true because it's a deadly serious activity where every man woman and child's fate is we may never have another exactly so don't mess up this chance don't take this brief breath in eternity to fuck it up yeah it's literally like that thank you stacy and there's something i wrote like for those of you in the chat who are non-scientologists or non-former scientologists it, that does sound funny what we just said but that is those are literally words from ksw human scientology right. work the policy yeah, that was that almost word for word before starting any and every major course in scientology or or like proper you know study or whatever and it literally says in those words that wasn't an exaggeration like effectively nope. scientology is the answer this is a deadly serious thing don't yeah. fuck around we'd rather have you dead than incapable I got to pull up that policy while you guys are talking. I'll throw that up later because it's such a powerful policy and it's one of the first ones that you read. Um, (coughs) uh, Yeah, it might be a little hard to find. But anyways, so I guess I guess we'll move on to the next part of the tone scale. So let me. Are are you going to show that whole video or are you are you going to. That was it. That was it. That was the whole thing. Oh, wow. I think there was like three seconds left. That's why I was saying like how mad it is that it doesn't actually tell you what the tone scale is. <laughs> like it shows you at the exactly. end a brief graphic, but then it just says, find out more or yeah. interest. Well, that's, that's, that's come on dissemination. Exactly. Yeah. They call it kind of a mystery sandwich too, yeah. where at the you way never to sell. You never, it's, it Get goes over it so many times. I was in, I was in Div 6 and studied a lot about this where, where you don't want to, um, you don't want to give somebody the whole answer to something mm-hmm. or you don't want to don't answer their questions exactly. fully get it. So they'll ask more. Otherwise you're going to just stop their, their, their reach for whatever they're going to stop, like stop their interest. And it works. It's typical marketing one on one. You don't give them all the information. Yeah. Otherwise they're not going to reach. And he was constantly pushing this as a good idea. And by the way, guys, the reason all of this was justified is because it's the greater good. How many times have you heard that phrase and how many cult leaders or ruthless uh, dictators have used that? Well, I'm sorry we had to kill a million people. It was for the greater good. Yeah. As soon as I hear that phrase, by the way, I immediately like my my ears go up because that you can justify anything with that. Yeah. So if all of you guys have reactive minds that are not Scientologists and that causes you to be irrational, that immediately separates us versus them. And until you guys get rid of that, we anything is justified to get you in that auditing chair to remove that reactive mind because it's for the greater good of the planet it's very seductive it's terrifying actually saying that out loud by the way this is the keeping scientology working at least a little bit of it that i can pull up and this is the policy that you have beat into your brain over and over and over and i'll just read a little bit of it because this isn't the actual policy but just to give you an idea KSW is the most important policy in the Church of Scientology, serves as the keystone for every action and is mandated to be presented as the first document at the beginning of every single course of study in Scientology, brainwashing 101. And the steps that are hammered in, by the way, are 10 of them, having the correct technology, knowing the technology, knowing it is correct. This is what is building up the certainty for you to go out and sell and pimp Scientology to other people. (coughs) Teaching correctly the correct technology, applying the technology, seeing that the technology is correctly applied, hammering out of existence incorrect technology. We all had these memorized, and I'm sure Catherine is a staff member. You could reel these off backwards and upside down. I've I've put them in clay. (laughs) You put those freaking things in clay. I know that sounds like people don't know what you're talking about, but but one of the things they do when when you study part of the, the, the study technology is that you take concepts and you like make these little clay representations out of them to show that you really understand it. 
So, yep. That's yeah. part of getting the lack of mass, which again is explained just like, Hey, you know, you can't study about a car without having a car in front of you. So everything is kind of logical, even though it's manipulative. Did you want to say something, Alex? On that? Um, no, I was just going to, I think I was just going to say something along the lines of what Catherine just said. Like I remember spending hours and hours like learning this and it, it, it's ingrained into your head. Like those 10 points, like any Scientologist will more than likely be able to tell you off like the top of their head because you have to learn them because they are so important. Right. Um, are the OT levels on Wikipedia? They might be. I just probably. Don't... You can definitely find all the OT levels. They are. Um, hmm? They are online for sure. Yeah, and we definitely. Got super chat. Oh, nice. Decultified. Thank you. Awesome. Hi all. Congrats on 4K, Alex. Would love to hear all your thoughts on the mood drills. Excellent question. And the tone scale drills on the PTS SP course. I did uh, that three I times, Catherine. I think you did that three times, yeah. right? Yeah, three done, fucking times we did this thing right. <laughs> and they're always coming up with new updates that's why that's you know right. what i mean and yeah. this is a big course and this is one of the biggest mind control techniques they have to boot people out of your life that are getting you to question scientology and to right. implant this tone scale this is this is a key course to make you into a sociopath a secondary sociopath in my opinion because it really hones in how to start faking emotions to manipulate people rather than just doing what's coming naturally. Exactly. And also guys, I want to ask you real quick, like as you're coming out, you know, it, it takes a long time to stop staring at people, to stop trying to manipulate people. Me and Alex were scale, talking right? about this the other day. Oh, really? We're talking about how hard it is to like, like you have to remember not to like have exactly. so much eye contact. Like I, I was doing a job interview the other day and I was like reminding myself to look away sometimes and not to be like so interested and so intense about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, don't be weird. Did don't Dahmer be experience experiment with mood drills? I'd like to know more about that. <laughs> Cause I mean, <clears throat> he didn't seem to have any moods going on. He always had this stone cold face, you know? Yeah. Um, but oh, yeah, the mood drills, that's where, by the way, guys, we act out. I remember sitting on course and you have to get sad or whatever. And then you have to say the line from Alice in oh, Wonderland, yeah, 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 remember? Yeah, yeah, and happy, and you have yeah, to hit right. all of them. And as an actor, I was thinking, this is bitching, man. This is going to teach me how to artificially um, produce emotions when I want them, which can be a good tool. But I, I learned in acting when I got into a real acting class while I was in Scientology, which was conflicting with my programming. Yeah. Martin Landau was my teacher, and he was teaching us how to act naturally, how to let things hit you naturally. And that was completely completely colliding against what I was learning in Scientology. And I brought this up with my supervisors a lot as I, because I felt like I was being programmed. I was being shut down, but I didn't know it. And I yeah. kept trying to tell them I'm trying to be natural and acting. And these things seem artificial. Why do I, why does I feel like it's hurting my acting? Just clear your misunderstood oh. word and carry on. Yeah. I could oh, feel that happening. Fascinating. Isn't it? Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. This is totally I didn't know bringing that. back memories. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, it's, it's it sucks. Like, cause I really thought that um, I was improving that, but it, it it that's part of you know everybody knows it's listened to my story. It was a book that was dropped off on my store that doorstep that got me out. But subconsciously, brother, because of the clash in the acting class, my real self coming forward versus clashing against the Scientology programming it caused a lot of problems. But I didn't know that was going to be part of what was going to be able to get me out of this freaking thing because the cognitive dissonance was extreme, brother. Yeah, and, and this is, um, we'll get into this a bit later. I think we need to go into like what actually the tone scale is. But I think mm -hmm. um, it is one of those things that does become ingrained in your mind. And this, I'll tell the story later. But um, this is one of those things that go that I noticed I was still doing or applying or it was still affecting me six years after leaving Scientology, right? I'll tell the story later. I've told it before, but I, um, I just want to get people to understand that this is a really, really core principle of Scientology and it is really important and you drill it, you practice it and how to use it. And it's one of those things that goes so deep in your mind that you're not, you're not even aware that it's a Scientology principle or technique that you're using anymore. Um, and it's one of those things that hit, hit home with me after I left six years of like, oh, hold on, I'm still doing something here that is a sign hangover from Scientology. So, um, I think, should we get into actually what we will but the chat yeah. is so good man yeah i mean you guys are saying such awesome stuff that's right roxy i do remember him saying that i'm sure it. i'm not the only actor that was having problems with this because that 
Oh my God, this is bringing back so much stuff. Good stuff, guys. Okay, so Alex, I guess we'll jump into the real heavy duty part. I don't want to, I want to go on a gradient and I don't want to skip uh, one here, but I guess we'll hit the, well, before I bring up the human chart, the chart of human evaluation, there's one other one I wanted to bring up. Um, I think the one with the, you know, the one with the graphic, like the little Okay, images. you want to see that one? Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good Yeah, with all the little, the little creatures on so, it. Okay, yeah. the creatures. This yeah, is so one. funny. My dad used to have this, by the way, like on several different places in our house when I was growing up. So I was constantly being hit with, this always made me smile because these, these guys are cute, aren't they? Yeah, and they, they animate them at the, on the Jones scale film. Oh, that's right. That you see I it. it that's right. Oh this my God. Is such I, was, a, I always thought they looked like germs or like bacteria. Really? I thought they looked like little <laughs> thetans. They're supposed to be thetans, by the way, guy. That's, that's what the spiritual being, they do look like. They look like coronavirus, don't they? Well, there goes the video. I'm surprised. <laughs> you know, probably just going to cut my ass down now. So I think it's mm -hmm. when you get down to the bottom and the lower levels, like, and they're all red and like blue. <laughs> right. green. It's, like, it's they, evil. To me, they've always looked a bit like little germs or bacteria. They or do something. now that you point that out. And but, they get evil too. Look at this one trying to like claw this other guy, and then this one's you know owning yeah, bodies and stuff. Blame. Yeah, blame. Alex, can I explain one thing real quick be, so we don't lose people about these negative tone scales? Because check it out, we have um, oh below one, the, body death, right? Yeah, and this used to yeah. always fuck me up. So the, the body death is right here, zero point zero. So what could possibly go more than you know below that? Here's the explanation for that um, that they give, and this is real quick. Um, so the emotional tone scale and sub zero tone scale. So let me just cut to it. Okay. Below zero on the tone scale is applicable only to a Thetan. So again, guys, you're already being, being indoctrinated that you're a spiritual being and you have past lives. That's a given in Scientology. So already it's a Gnostic tradition, so to speak, where it's not questioned as to, cause this could, you can get to the tone scale in one of the very first courses that you do. And you might raise your hand and go. I don't believe that I'm a spiritual being. I so now I have to all of a sudden believe in past lives too, and it just skips all that, and it set, it makes you believe in the below, whatever. So a thetan may be described as the viewpoint of the person, and that's what you are in Scientology. It has been quite commonly observed that there are two positions for any individual on the tone scale. This occurs because there's a, there's a position for the composite of the thetan plus the MEST, matter, energy, space, and time body. Operate. This is all just gibberish, which we're going to lose people. Let me get to the point here. A person may have two positions on this tone scale, one on the Thetan plus body scale. That's the plus stuff. And the other on the Thetan alone scale. So that explains the, the negative shit. I just wanted to explain that real quick. Yeah, I think the key thing for you to understand is we're talking about emotions here. And the tone scale is Scientology's way of um explaining and understanding um emotions but they kind of take it one step further in the in saying like you you just pointed out that it's something that doesn't just affect you in the physical universe the messed universe as the scientologists mm -hmm. would say magic ma matter energy space and time messed like it affects you on a spiritual level so exactly. if you think about things in that context you can exhibit emotions in the messed world in your body. Um, but then you have these negative emotions that are below zero, which is death, um, because you're a spiritual being. Um, exactly. And as a spiritual being, you therefore exhibit um, a level on the tone scale. Um, can we go back to that graphic one? Again? Sure. And by the way, I, th I assume Catherine's with us, but she just yeah, took I think off for a second. Off okay. She'll okay. come back, I'm sure. But um, there she like, is. so this is the. Can Let me blow it up, Alex, so I can give you a, a better right. visual of it. Can I explain yeah. it real quick, Alex, before we jump, before I go in further on this? So this is um, the chart of human evaluation that we use that's in the book, Science of Survival. And this is how you chart someone on those various tone levels that you just saw in that video. And then across each of these things, it gives you a prediction of how they're going to act, what their psychology is, et cetera. And I'll zoom in and pull this up. Take it away, Alex. I was just going to say, can we go back to the graphic one? Because I think that's a good. Oh, sure, after. sure um explanation of people so this is like the introductory level the base level explanation of what the tone scale is as a concept um and the human chart of, of human the chart of human evaluation that doug was just showing is the more in-depth like hubbard's real dissecting of this but this in a nutshell is what Aaron hubbard says um is the explanation and the way people um, react and feel emotions he never said like if emotions are a transient thing and you 
you can feel different emotions in different ways and there isn't a scientific method of going through emotions exactly. right if you no, look at not. for example the um five stages of grief right and you look at maslow's hierarchy of needs like there are tools out there to help you better understand emotions but even the five or whatever it is stages of grief like that is presented almost in a cyclical like fashion like it's not actually that you go through this stage then this stage then this stage you can sort of move between them and one of the key things here is um in this graphic that has just disappeared from the screen oh I'll but add it, it. It, goes, it it goes through like it says so can you scroll up a little bit to like sure. maybe some of the happier ones, or like maybe it's like tone yeah down a bit maybe yeah so what it's saying here is if you are tone 4.0 right you're enthusiastic yeah um, if you are enthusiastic, that you're only ever going to therefore afterwards be cheerful, which is below, or aesthetic, right? And then you go to exhilaration. You can't go from enthusiasm to right. exhilaration yeah. without and going have to through, go through it. All of the That's time. such yeah. bullshit. That's and, a great and also, point. supposedly, anything anything below 2.0 right is, right here, is your reactive mind is controlling you exactly the idea in science of all of scientology auditing and training is to raise you on the tone scale and to have that tone stay more and more consistent and if you're at 2.0 this is where you you get labeled as kind of an evil person and the worst one you can be is called 1.1 covertly hostile that's where they put gays anybody against scientology and this is the most evil level you can yeah, be at backstabbing manipulative it says it's the most dangerous level of the tone scale right and what he's talking about what a human translation for covert hostility is not what hubbard says it's what we, we would call a sociopath those that manipulate um without you know have no conscience which yeah. is what hubbard was and and what Catherine just said about below 2.0 on the tone scale, that's where your reactive mind is taking over. Mm -hmm. um, except if you're an SP, because if you're a exactly. suppressive person, you are 1-1 one, one on the tone scale. And being a suppressive person is like, that's you as a spiritual being, as a Thetan. Exactly. You are an antisocial personality person. That's not necessarily your reactive mind affecting you. That's because you actually are someone who is trying to attack people and trying um to stop people from succeeding and all of this um exactly. which in itself is interesting but yeah if you are labeled an enemy of the church um you are one one on the tone scale and what it it goes into it in a bit more depth in science of survival but it's interesting because it says if you are one one on the tone scale um they someone may come across as higher on the tone scale they may come across as enthusiastic but if you're an antisocial personality or you're a suppressive person it's covert hostility that's the idea is you may right. come across as enthusiastic but right. really your intentions are bad and negative here is Which that is interesting because it, it is interesting man uh go ahead i'm sorry to interrupt man i was just gonna say because the whole idea of emotions and you move through them and you go from stage to stage there seems to be an almost resignation in um in your mind that if you're one one on the tone scale there's no helping you you can't bring someone up from 1.1 you can't right. help them if you're a suppressive person you're best just to like disconnect from them and all of this because by speaking to them slightly above the, or whatever, using that tactic we'll talk about in a minute, but like mm -hmm. they're not going to change if you're an antisocial personality, um, which contradicts the main principle of the tone scale being this thing that you move through and along in this linear fashion. Yeah. Catherine, how would you use this? Um, did you, would you use this in your Sea Org application or dealing with public and or other Sea Org members? Oh, absolutely. This is like something you use on a daily basis. It's like, exactly to 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 deal with people or to handle people or to react the right way but it's it's just it's just it's it's all about like suppressing what you actually feel so that you'll come across higher toned and you know somebody won't give you a hard time or or yell at you or you won't get in trouble or whatever because you're you're for for being downtown or you won't get investigated or it's like okay well you're gonna get a sec check because you're you're so you have such bad indicators like you like you always want to appear right. like you're doing well you're happy la la, la you're uh, you, exactly. you don't you don't ever want to be 
low tone because that's just you're just you're just letting your reactive mind take over and that's that is so true and also <laughs> like on a similar vein of it causing suppression of emotions um when you feel an emotion not only do you have that thing in your head of like oh I've, i'm gonna need to come across in a different way even if i feel negative or whatever um you're the way you process emotions, you might think, you know, why do I feel upset or why am I sad or, you know, whatever, that process in your mind, the answer is the tone scale. Like the tone scale is presented. Yeah, as the, yeah, and the answer, answer is that you're, it's, it's just your reactive mind. If you're, yeah. if, if you're below 2.0, it's your reactive mind taking over and, and you don't want your reactive mind to take over. So you better get, you better get higher on the tone scale. Yeah. So what you're doing instead of actually processing your emotions you are trying to make them fit into this tone scale thing and into this model of the reactive mind and the tone scale and therefore you're thinking well i must feel this way because of this or this or you know i was here on the tone scale and now i'm here that's why i feel this way what you're actually doing is not really processing those emotions because you're just using the tone scale as you as an explanation and therefore not actually processing them in your mind yeah. And yeah, I mean, charismatic fiend, exactly. They'll, they'll call, you don't want to ever be called one, one. And if, if you, you know, you didn't show up to finish your course by Thursday yeah. at two to help the supervisor uh, and the mission or whatever, get their stats up. Yeah. The one, one, they'll just call you. It's just, it's just mind bending listening to you guys and taking this apart. Cause how on earth did I ever believe this? And someone else um, said, yeah, I would never last in Scientology because I would always have questions, but you know, I was talking about this with Marcus when we had him on. He asked a million questions, too, as did I. But how would you explain this, Alex or Catherine, how our mind doesn't simply go, wait, wait, wait a minute. This does not make sense. I guess how would you explain that? If, if you start out, especially if you've been doing Scientology for a long time, like you've started out on a lower like it starts out on a gradient it's exactly. not like it's not like you're hit with all this information at once it's like it starts out like like very simple and gets and just builds and builds and builds and gets more and more complicated and as you learn like um the definitions for various things and, and then you use that and in, in later studies and it's just it just builds on itself mm. until you have this whole system and this whole way of thinking like you automatically think of the tone scale or you automatically think of you know, the ARC triangle, which, which is, isn't even like, like, as far as the ARC triangle, it's not even like a totally invalid, like it could be used, but it's not as it's, it's not as, as set in stone and you, works every time as they like to say yeah. that it is. Exactly. And that the video that we showed at the beginning is a, a real good example of that, right? The video that is the first thing you probably will come across in Scientology about the tone scale yeah. is on the website, is on the YouTube. That's the most entry level thing. And they're saying this is what the tone scale is. They don't actually tell you what it is. What it does is it provides you... Um, a concept right that you can agree with by saying things That's like right. well if yeah. you That's come true. across and also angry they yeah. might not be thinking rationally if you're angry you may lie or you may like not react in the way that you'd expect you're not thinking logically and you kind of think okay well everyone can think of an example of when they've seen that happen right because it's a fairly mm -hmm broad idea as a concept and they then say well the tone scale is the way that we you know help you understand emotions better so that you can avoid situations like that and you yeah. go okay cool so like all questions you have like at that point you don't have these really in, in implicit questions about moving up and down the tone scale and like going from one to the other because it's introduced at a very very simple le level that you won't have any of those like really deep questions because it's just a exactly. concept. And then the next thing they might show you is that graphic chart that we were showing you with the little things that I think looks like germs that are actually the spiritual beings. But, um, mm. it, you know, that is a little bit more in depth, but still it's quite, it's not the full tone scale because it's like, well, look, if you've seen someone who is angry or I always use that one as an example because it's quite a, a you know, recognizable thing, mm -hmm. anger, right just below that is hate so you can in your mind think well yeah i've seen someone who hated someone and then got angry at them right 
everyone can probably think of like an example of that in their life and he's put them one next to the other and he goes well look someone who hates someone will move up or down so they'll either resent them or they'll be angry at them they'll yeah. go up or down exactly <laughs> so, they, can use so, that. They, they can also use this against against critics as far as like the the point on like if you're excuse me <coughs> excuse me if you're if you're angry, like if somebody is coming across angry about Scientology or angry about what happened to them in Scientology, oh, well, they're probably twisting the truth. They're, exactly. they're telling one, one. And they're twisting the truth. And, and even if they're just being like angry about it or upset about it, oh, well, they must be twisting the truth. Absolutely. That's a perfect That's a perfect segue, actually, Alex, if you don't mind, into this this heavy concept called the Hubbard Chart of Human Evaluation. So what do you guys want to take? You want to take one one as an example? Do you want to take anger as an example to show people yeah. all the different categories? Which one would you like? I, I think one one's a good one because yeah, but one. yeah, because that's, that's the most dangerous. That's yeah, what you have to watch out for. Yeah, okay. exactly. And, we and before to before we get too deep into it, mm -hmm. I'll just quickly say, just finish on that point of like asking these questions and all of this getting into it right because it's given to you bit by bit and it's not like you know they'll tell they'll do it like we have just done and in an hour explain it all and go into the chart of evaluation like this right. is done over time right and yeah. the fact is that it shows you like that hate thing i was telling you about you if you if you can think about someone that's in hate you're either going to be resent resenting or anger like there's there's no way that you can disagree with that because everyone has an example of when someone's moved between those three things. So your questions aren't like fundamental to, well, this doesn't make sense or I don't see how this is true because you, everyone can relate to it. And then once you're kind of studying it and understanding it and applying it and thinking, cool, well, next time I see someone that's angry, I'm going to watch, you know, on the street or whatever, I'll watch them. And then in your mind, you think, oh, yeah, I see. I saw him there go from anger to hate. So that validates in your mind that this tone scale thing is right because you have started to apply the tone scale to your life and make it work and make it acceptable and make it agreeable. And then they show you this thing or you read it in the book. And this is where it really it goes in depth explaining like the exact points of every single emotion and what that therefore means in many different ways. Um, and I think one, one's a good one. Yeah. Because it's one that everyone knows that is like covert hostility at like, that's the most dangerous. It's suppressive people. Yeah. Homosexuality is considered one, one on the tone scale. Um, can, I, can I just say something about this? Yeah. Please, okay. and then we'll jump into this because this is fascinating, man. You guys have, got so have, many ideas going on. Have both of you read Science to Survival? Yeah. Many, many uh, times. Yeah, I've read it like five times. Too. Sorry <laughs> to hear that. I kept trying to understand it. That's why. I read yeah, it. I know. Me too. <laughs> so, Me too. so I just want to just just for people that are watching. So, in Science to Survival, basically each each column you see at the top, this A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever. Mm -hmm. So each of those columns is a chapter in Science Survival, and he goes into detail about how people supposedly at these tone levels will react uh, in these in these different columns, like what their emotion is, what their like how they they see stuff, even how they how well they hear, how well they feel, how, like how do they talk to people, how do they listen. Like all these points are chapters. Wow. I forgot how in depth this was yeah. just, just real quick, Catherine, to show people what we're talking about. So the way this works is, and man, I use this all the time. This is amazing to, to revisit this shit. This is why I love these streams because I was into this. So, so I would use this on my girlfriend or potential mates, friends or whatever. Yeah. And the way it works is, is up here. So there's a different tone levels right here, right? 4.0, 3.5, and then 1.5, et cetera. And then the infamous one, one, which we're going to use as an example. But before I get to that, so what you do is you find out where someone is on this tone scale. Oh, I know this guy's a sociopath. He's a one, one. And then you go across all these different areas here. And at the top, it shows you that you can accurately predict. You can't guys. It's, it's a manipulation tool, which we're going to get more into, but I felt that I could, and this is what Scientologists are doing. So if they have you pegged as an angry person, this is your chronic tone level. We all go up and down, but Hubbard says everybody has a chronic tone level. Are they mostly angry? Are they mostly sad or whatever? So let's say you have a mate that's 1-1. One, one, you know he's got a knife behind his back, and you want to suss him, right? So you can get everything from 
well, Dianetic evaluation, blah, blah, blah. So you can, he puts it in Scientology terms, but supposedly you can learn their behavior and psychology, their psychiatric range, their medical range, their emotion, their affinity, sonic, visio, somatic. You're going to learn how they talk in speech, how they listen in speech. You're going to find out how the subject handles written or spoken communication when he acts as a relay point. You're going to understand their degree of reality, their condition of their track. That's their past lives and their bank and shit. And then all this sexual behavior and attitude toward children, just on and on. How well are they going to be able to command the environment? This is what people use to determine if they're going to have an, uh, an employee, you know, a uh, this. Is, I don't want to get into too much detail, but it's just it's crazy how, how detailed this is. Actual work yeah. to society compared yeah. to apparent worth. It's yeah, also, it's it's also, I, remember, I remember asking a question one time of a supervisor when I was studying this and because I went like I would think about someone I knew who is a clear and then I I compared them just for myself I compared them them to this chart right and they were supposedly clear like they no longer had their own reactive mind but there were so many points on this chart where they were really really low so I'm like isn't it clear so if you go back to the beginning back to the corner on the top left of the chart go to the go to the top for a second because it says you know, it says clear under Dianetic Evaluation. It's talking about clear. Like, this is how you're supposed to be when you're clear. But yet you have all these other, all these other lower, lower things happening. And you're like, okay, so this, this doesn't, this doesn't add up. And I remember asking about this. And you know what they showed me? <laughs> what? Because it doesn't add up. Yeah. Like you, might, you might know this one. I don't know if Alex does. But there's this technical bulletin called the the nature of a being and basically says oh how, yes how complex he is and he's complex. not yep. and that was the answer to it you're like okay so it's supposed to be this infall inf infallible chart that you can use for anything <laughs> but yet you can't <laughs> he had an out for everything Catherine. for every right. reference that you could pull right. up there was a counter reference and that's part of the mind control it's purposely set up to contradict itself i talked about so this ridiculous. in one of the videos yeah. it's very clever though because Someone was saying earlier, and we were discussing this ourselves, why wouldn't you just leave? How would you fall for this? And I'm having trouble with that myself. But part of that is what Catherine says. We're not jumped into this right away. We're slowly indoctrinated. But it's yeah. that contradiction, man, that actually creates the inability to think critically. And Hubbard did that on purpose. For example, there was when my parents were being regged to, you know, mortgage their house to give it, you know, to sell it, which they to, to the to get the bridge, which they do all the time. They want to get as much money out of you as possible. My parents always knew what counter. See, there's one reference that says, look, the OT levels are the most valuable thing on the planet. They're more important than any kind of other consideration or physical universe possession that you possess. Therefore, you should always give your money to Scientology. Yet there was a counter policy that my parents knew how to pull out like, you know, instantly that would counter that as to why you need to do statistics, hold on to your money and apply the conditions and not just spend it fruitlessly. And that was totally, totally by design with Hubbard to make everything. When it comes to spending your money on Scientology, that that doesn't apply. You don't apply that. Exactly. <laughs> That's that? right. <laughs> they call it policy wars in Scientology where, you know, you got, yeah. um, you know how it is, Catherine, being on staff, right? How many policy wars would you have with people where you knew what to break out against this and that? It's like, you know. So retarded. It's also this is an example of the kind of idea of I don't you know people call it brainwashing and stuff, but self brainwashing like it's self. There's no element of belief in Scientology, or that's what they tell you anyway, because they don't present this thing of the idea of the tone scale to you and say, do you believe it? Do you not believe it? Like it's not like you know in the christian church there's the bible and you interpret it and interpret it in whatever way you want to but the idea of the story of jesus you believe it or you don't believe it yeah. whereas in scientology it's like no this is a practical tool that you can apply yeah this is so, all this is actually the way life works yeah this, this is the way life works and so what it does is it makes you think that you're the one in control because it's saying look this is the reality, like Catherine said, this is how life actually works. This is how people are, and this is why they behave certain ways. And what you do is you read it and you look at it and you try and make it real to yourself. That's what these saying design told you. You're trying to apply it so that you understand it and agree with it. So you think when you're reading this and you're reading Science and Survival, you look at it and go, okay, so when's an example of when I've seen someone 
at this state on the tone scale and let me really think about it were they like this yeah they were like this could I see how that and you go through it and kind of make it real and then you end up in a situation where you think yeah I'm applying it I have come to the conclusion myself on my own determinism that this is true and correct because I've thought of it in situations and so on. I've not, they've not presented it to, to you and you go, I believe it. They make you think that you've decided to agree with it because you've applied it. Right. And I know that's a really minutia kind of point, but it's important because that's how Scientology actually works because it makes you feel like you're the one in control. And therefore, exactly. once you agree with it and you start applying it, when things start to not start like make sense and you have questions and all of this, you never think to question the fundamentals. You're so that, right. Oh well, like, and if you, do, and if you do question the fundamentals, so right, Alex. Like, then you get sent to ethics. Yeah, yeah. Alex, that's such a great point, man. You just reminded me, you stimulated, if you will, how I got up to grade four, and I remember thinking the ability that I was supposed to get on grade zero, which you would test to when you're in a hypnotic high and you feel like you had this gain and then it wears off after a day, a week or whatever. So you have to do more Scientology. You're promised at the end of grade zero that you'll be able to communicate freely with anyone on any subject. And I remarked to my supervisor or my auditor when I was uh, on grade four, I feel like my world's getting narrow and smaller. I now have PTSSP technology in my head and my friends seem evil. I can't communicate freely with anyone on any subject. And, you know, these are the kind of cognitive dissonances that was constantly kicking in. But as we talked earlier, they always had a reference. The, Catherine, I can't tell you how many times that nature of a being was brought up. That's yeah. the ultimate policy to bring up if you can't explain Scientology, because like you said, it says... Man is a composite. He's complex. He's not just one thing. And there he's hinting and, at the and, body. Know, think about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was going to say. If you think right. about it, when he's talking about composite later on, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about all these beings. I know. You know and he, but he can't say it out loud. Cause, and stuff. Right. Because that's a non confidential one. I, I'll try to pull that one up. That's a fascinating policy. I mean, I give Hubbard credit for one thing. He certainly crammed together all the best mind control techniques and everything and put them all in one package where it seems like a science just based on the number of amount of material that it has in it yeah but you then know? you go where are the case studies like he, where i know case you know you know what jason begay study. says about that jason begay's like yeah you know i tried it out on his his, his um oh, sorry about that uh, his case study was, I tried it out. I can't get this, Alex. It's like there's got the little three thingies, but I come up full screen and you two freaking go on over here. It's like, how do I quickly? <laughs> That's much better. Hello, you guys don't mind doing the stream like this, do you? So anyways, <laughs> no, dude, this, you know, this is the first three way, again, no pun intended, about how to freaking get you guys to show up. Just, just pick one God and, it. and leave it. <laughs> Hey man, give me some credit. I'm doing pretty good. I'm working. I, I'm working my way around. Okay, We're having three <laughs> thetans or beings uh, to work with here. <laughs> You're being very one one, guys. Give me a break, right? I also have to go to one five antagonism and start addressing you as such. All right, holy shit. I think what well, just going back to what Catherine said a second ago about the you know when I said you don't you don't question the fundamental things, and then Catherine said if you do question it, you get sent to ethics. Like just to continue that, like. Yeah. And then when you're in ethics, it's not like, you know, you don't question, you know, they say, well, the reason you're questioning this basic principle. I'm sorry. Somebody said they're going to give up. Hey, I'm sorry, Carol. I'm sorry. Carol. I'm, sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We'll have it. We'll have it better next time. But give me a break, guys. I mean, this it doesn't give you many options with the three. Sorry, Alex, please continue. I was talking about something serious now and I've forgotten no, go it. Go ahead. Sorry. It was. Ethics, it was I can't remember. You're saying, something about ethics and like you're saying you're saying you don't question the fundamentals if you are you're sent to ethics. So then when you go to ethics, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. and then when you get sent to ethics, the question they ask is like, well, what have you done wrong against the church? Like you're the one. Yeah. Like you look inwards at like, well, you've done something wrong, and therefore you don't agree with the policy because actually you're just trying to you know cover up some something you've done wrong yeah, you've got crimes, fault with the church you've got overt, sir you've got you've got yeah. that's the problem 
yeah and then once you could because in without going too much into ethics ptsp stuff but like if you an ow tech like if you have done something if you've done something wrong and you're trying to cover it up you will find fault in the person you've done something wrong against so if you don't agree with a fundamental like the tone scale and you're like this doesn't make sense you get sent to ethics they'll get you to figure out what it is you've done wrong right and the reason you didn't agree with it or you found some issue with the tone scale is because you were finding fault with the church because you've done something wrong against the church. And by finding fault with the church, that makes you feel better about doing something wrong because it justifies exactly. it. Exactly. Oh, well, and so this is the sort of thing I'm trying to get across with the tone scale thing. Like, it, it's it, There's never a point where you, you like have an act of faith, right? It's just applied. And it's it, you, you do it to yourself <laughs> with yeah. exactly. aware of it at the time. Exactly. You totally do. That's why it's so important. And that's why it goes so deep in your brain. You know? yeah. Exactly. So speaking yeah. of the whole the whole ethics thing, that's why it's so important. And I'll put in a plug for this right now. And I do practically every podcast I, I'm on, I say this. Um, if you've if you've just come out of Scientology or you're getting out of Scientology, whatever, that one of the best books you can read is jeffrey uh jeffrey hawkins book i'll pull that up I Minds. and he he breaks down the entire ethics book and every every little bit of the ethics book and it really helps you go like oh wow yeah yeah that does make sense that doesn't because that's like that's the basic thing they use to control people because because exactly. it's like Alex said, if you don't agree with the fundamentals and you really exactly. you disagreeing with the fundamentals well you're going to be Send to ethics from the supervisor. And, I can't wait to get this uh, book, by the way. Condition to figure out if you're if you really are going to be a Scientologist or you or you 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 get a your or you get a, a sec check, security check, interrogation, or whatever they decide. It's it's it comes down to ethics. So. And that's a great point that you make. Obviously, we're not. We'll definitely do the ethics conditions maybe next time because it's so important. And just like the tone scale, it is the main tool that's drilled into you. I have been working on a video on this for a while. I know Chris Shelton is going to do one, I think, on this or the tone scale. No one's really broken down the ethics and how important they are. So when you told me about this book yesterday, I cannot wait to get this. Yeah, man. it's fantastic. I've read it several times. Oh, I, I just I can't imagine. But just, just to let the audience know what we're talking about real briefly, everything in life, you're at some condition, whether that's normal, affluence, um, treason, and then they had these steps that, again, we're back to the scales and everything's a computer program in Scientology. They have an exact way to follow the steps to get you from treason up to normal, up to affluence, up to power. And again, it's all manipulative. It's very clever the way it circles back around to Scientology always. It has a yeah, built-in snag. Yeah, because once you get to doubt, once you get to the- Exactly. The, choose the, doubt, the group that- Yeah, you're trying to make up your mind. It's like, exactly. how could you possibly- not choose Scientology. Exactly. And I can't wait to get into that. I'm sure Jefferson goes into that in the book, right? How that's specifically a doubt, it circles back around to the greater group is always Scientology. That's why right? I never did a doubt condition. I just left. Oh, a smart move. And you're, you're, <laughs> if you guys are new joining us, she has many videos, uh, including an interview she's done with Alex. Her story is absolutely fascinating and is a really good example on how you, the public, and caring friends can actually help get somebody out of Scientology. It's an excellent case study, too, Catherine, on how to actually save people. Because you. you were in for 27 years, and the way you got out, I'm not going to give any spoilers here, is, is not only fascinating, but wow, I'm thinking that's how we get people out. You know what I mean? It's amazing. Thank or, you, Marilyn. Or here I am for the super chat. Oh, is yeah. this, this this is the one she makes all this all the uh, the crocheted stuff, right? Oh, do you make Marilyn? Are you yeah, the one that's I making the Xenu uh, bobblehead doll? Oh, that's so funny. That's I saw so that on a stream Marilyn, the other day. She's yeah, Marilyn great. makes the costumes for the micro yeah. bobbleheads. bobblehead. Um, <laughs> so good, Marilyn. Baby so I want a baby funny. Xenu. Um, I think someone else makes the baby zinis, oh, but the, but there's a link. I might be wrong. There's a link to her Facebook. I think Goldie should have it that she can put in the chat. But and when um, she drops it, I'll throw it up here, guys. Yeah, she sells she sells link um, her crochet stuff through Facebook. Um, so if you want a That's outfit, great. your micro bobblehead, 
Marilyn's place to go to. But um, thank you for the super chat, Marilyn. Um, and Marilyn, if you're joining us or if you're just confused, yeah, we're trying to break down Scientology nomenclature and gibberish as best as we can. But I know it's probably going over people's heads, even though probably you have been yeah. in Scientology. So I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Don't feel alone. And yeah, good because it's all, it's us. good. It's yeah. yeah, exactly. But it's also good because we don't want to program anybody into Scientology. So the less you understand in a certain way, the better. But I love listening to you anyways. My former cult had its own language too. I think they all do. Exactly. That is a key. What, how many, how many uh, words did your cult have, uh, Marilyn? And what cult was it, if you don't mind explaining? Because I think Scientology has one of the biggest dictionaries and one of I'm the sure. biggest redefinition sure. of words. Yeah. I'd be curious how to know how much yours yeah. has. Anyways, just really, Alex, if you don't mind, I'll pick up real quick on showing this chart of human evaluation for the for one one. You know what I mean? Just so people can get a, get an idea of what the hell we're talking about and kind of how complex it is. Um, yeah, let's so, do it. So let's say you are one one, which is covert hostility, right? Now, as you saw at the top, we had all these different categories where you can plot someone's physiology and behavior, psychiatric range, medical range, emotion, on and on, right? All these different things. So let's say you have a buddy that's 1-1 one, one, and you want to know all this about him. All you do in Scientology is you go across the chart and this is how you're going to treat your mate and approach him from now on once you believe this. So you go, my mate is capable of minor execution. He's psychotic. And I'm going to skip the endocrine system bullshit. because. So this one is how would he handle... Emotion. So you know that your one one friend is going to have unexpressed resentment and he's going to be acting out of fear and he's going to be covertly hostile. In other words, he's got the knife behind his back. He's going to this is all about the next. These next ones are all about his reactive mind, which I'm going to skip since the reactive mind doesn't exist anyways. And then here's how this this level right here is how he's going to speech talks and speech listens. So how do I deal with my buddy who's at, who's at one one? Uh, what can I expect? Talks apparent theta. That means positivity, positivity, but intent vicious. Listens little, mostly to cabal, gossip, lies. Now, we all know people like this, right? And he is describing a sociopath. So some of these things you might be going, hmm, this makes sense. How is he going to handle communication? He's going to relay only malicious communication. Cuts communication lines, won't relay. By the way, since my parents would have me pegged as a 1-1 because I left Scientology, they're not listening to anything I say or when I've been trying to wake them up. They know that I will re only relay malicious calm. Don't listen to Doug. They know that I'm going to cut calm lines. I won't relay. They know that I doubt my own reality. I have insecurity and I doubt the opposing reality. They know I'm in a synthetic valence. That means some other beingness or whatever, which is another Scientology yeah, like word. You're acting like another person. You're not acting exactly. I'm going to be promiscuous. I'm going to express perversion, sadism, and irregular practices. And I'm going to, how do you handle children? My parents would think that my use of children would be for sadistic purposes. I'm going to have no control of reason or emotions. Look, they took, they took in, in the 2007 release of this book and this chart, mm -hmm. they took out the point on, 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 uh, if, oh, you if, want me to on homosexuality. Yeah. They took yeah. that out of the book. What do you mean, Catherine? They took, it's out of the book. They don't say it doesn't say it anymore under one one. Really? It perfectly no said. way. Yeah, they took it out. I saw that. I noticed that in the book. I was like, oh, they took that out. I noticed it as soon as I read the new book. I was like, interesting. Wow. They got such a PR flap on that from yeah. from putting gays and one one, and they're probably trying to get more LGBTQ friendly. So I know they got enough heat. I'm sure that's why Miss Cabbage removed yeah, it. Yeah, but they still think it. They still. Of course they do. Of course they do. Of course they, do. they just they won't say it out loud. They also didn't take it out of Dianetics, right? In Dianetics, it very clearly says, which is the first book in Scientology, that um, homosexuality is a sexual perversion, right? And it, yeah. in the paragraph that talks about it, it's very, very clear. Um, and so right. religious, even if homosexuality isn't explicitly there in science of survival anymore in the one one category the wording and the way it's talked about when talking about perverts for example and sexual perversion anyone who's read dianetics will make that link because earlier he said homosexuals and lgbtq plus are um perverts well you put them in the same category in your mind so it doesn't even need to say homosexuality is one one anymore because sexual perversion stuff yeah. is linked as the same thing That's um right. 
And I think it's also interesting that like what you were saying about earlier about cut common your parents and stuff doug right mm -hmm. scientology teaches that suppressive people anti-scientologists people that speak out against scientology are one one on the tone scale exactly and so it's that's how they justify um any attacks that people like us make on the church exactly. and that's why it's quite hard for people in scientology to excuse me um to watch videos right that are talking critically about scientology or negatively because as soon as you say one thing right that's potentially critical or negative any scientologist that's read science of survival and done any study on the tone scale is going to instantly think see that's evidence right he's one one and he's an sp exactly. because he just said scientology is a lie or it's a cult or it's wrong and as all it takes is one thing and that scientologist exactly is going right. to think in their mind yeah right no it's true he must be one one on the tone scale and therefore everything he says is invalid and i'm not going to listen to it right? perfect explanation I'm they link them this. in that same exactly chart right. So all it takes is one thing and you just jump to that conclusion in your head. So it's really important when talking to people who are currently in Scientology, for example, to not criticize. And, you know, when I was in Scientology, people were saying Scientology is cult. You believe in Xenu, right? None of that. You know, people I remember someone coming up to me and going, um, do you need help? Like, are you OK? Do you need help getting out? And I'm like. No, I'm like absolutely fine. Like it, you just shut it down in your head yeah. because you think yeah, this person is crazy. Exactly. Right. I ran into the same the, the, the same thing in Columbus when I was out on the street doing promo and doing book sales. You'd have people yelling at you all the time, and you just yeah. you just you just ignored it, or or you think or you think, oh well, we must be doing really well because we're getting so attacked. That's yeah. when you know you're doing well. Yeah, exactly. People yeah. get people don't like it that you're succeeding so well That's much right. because they're jealous and with it. Like you, you tell yourself these little lies and stuff to to make it true in your head. But that's why it just you know attacking Scientology in such an overt way, calling it a cult and you know protests and things that you know they, they have their value, they have their merit, but they don't work in getting through to people who are currently in Scientology, right? Because of this tone scale thing. Because yeah. this is literally how scientologists think people behave it gives this is why people behave in this certain way this is why people are being nasty to scientology because all suppressive people are one one and therefore xyz which is what the child yeah. is going to can i say one thing on that alice because it's a huge great point that you just made this is part of what's called thought terminating cliches in mind control parlance meaning the reason you can't talk to a scientologist or i couldn't beat some sense into my parents with logic is because of exactly what he just said. And what you're seeing with the tone scale is how a Scientologist is being set up to look at people on these various tone levels, automatically thought terminate, cl thought terminating cliche. If someone says something negative about Scientology, therefore they're one, one on the tone scale yeah. and he's a, and all the thing characteristics I just showed you. So that's what's happening inside the mind of a Scientologist. And mm -hmm. that's why often it can, it takes a Scientologist, someone who's lived it, to know how to speak to a Scientologist to get them out because you have to know how to dodge these mind traps that Alex just pointed out and how to speak to them without criticizing them because what's happening is you're triggering them by acting a certain way or saying certain things and this tone scale is a perfect tool to show how that's happening and what's going on inside the Scientologist's that's mind. That's right. Great, great point, well dude. Well said. <laughs> and by the way, real quick on this, yeah, this channel, this is the third channel that I have up, but I think this one will last. I got taken down for copyright violation, supposedly. Oh, no. It's a long story. Alex covered it. Scientology may or may not be behind. It doesn't matter. I'm only putting up stuff that can't get me in trouble. And all the good, juicy stuff that can't be on YouTube is on my BitChute channel. And you can find a link in the description. But please sub here if you haven't. I think this channel will last. And we just have to start over again. We had 54,900 subscribers. And now we're starting wow. back from the beginning. But who gives a shit, man? All the good people, all the everybody came back, you know, and yeah. uh, it's great. To, it's great to just be on here again. So thanks yeah, for asking. Anyone that. that's watching this stream from my channel, please go over to Days Been Not Confused, DBNC. There is a link in the description. Go and go and follow Doug. He's a really thanks, good man. guy. He, he was doing this way before me. And like he like he said, he had like 55, 54,000 subscribers. Um, and then it all crashed. So um go check, go check Doug's channel out if you haven't already. Thank you, brother. And vice versa. I always leave the link to Alex's channel um, whenever we do videos in the description box as well. And everything that you want to know about, how do you get out of the Aftermath Foundation, et cetera, those links are in there too, which Goldie always provides in the chat too. 
And hey, while we're talking about YouTube type stuff, everyone mm -hmm. take a minute to press that like button. Oh yeah, please do. That helps. <laughs> it's cheesy and Famous. we have to work with this stupid algorithm, but you know what? The more people that like, share, and throw a comment in after the video, even if it's just to say a comment, I know it's lame guys, but listen, it's wait till you hear Catherine's story, you know, and how she was watching freaking videos of Aaron and and the and Shelton and stuff while she was in the Sea Org. So the more they get distributed, you never know who is going to be lurking, and it could it could be the trigger just a video to get them coming out. I I still want to give spoiler alerts because it was that Matrix video right from Aaron that got you. Got that, you yeah, that, that was yeah. one. That was one of them. Definitely. It's just a video that he put out, and she's yeah, in the freaking Sea Org watching this stuff. So yeah, help us help us spread it if you don't mind. Not not you know for the best reason being that you know we it actually does work in getting people out. Your story is amazing, Catherine. I mean, I I just. I can't believe it. And, and she was also helped out by the Aftermath Foundation. Uh, and it's just a thriving success story. And I still don't know how you're so freaking happy, man. I had <laughs> sadness for years, Catherine. Massive really? PTSD. Yeah. yeah. I've got to talk to you more about that when we do it. Yeah, yeah, so I want to know the secret to your success. Yeah. I think well, it's just it's something to consider that, like, er, like I said earlier, everyone experiences emotions and things like this in a different way, Great right? Point. And it's the same with recovery from Scientology, coercive groups, cults, whatever it is, abusive relationships, right? Everyone feels things differently. And yes, there are ways of like kind of explaining things in loose terms and justifying and categorizing stuff but there is no universal way of explaining or um justifying emotions because they are just so transient and it's the same with people's recovery journeys right yeah. there will be similarities like the stages of grief in people's recovery people will move from being depressed and sad to being angry about their experience in Scientology, right? Or about their experience in an abusive or coercive relationship. It's natural to have those different feelings, but it doesn't go from being upset and angry and sad or just being upset and sad to right. then angry to then being like attacking. Like Sci Scientology presents emotions in this linear fashion that you have to go from one to the other. Um, and I think if if it's cool with both of you, I thought it'd be interesting to talk briefly about how it's used to manipulate people and manipulate emotions. Because when you think of it in this way of like, you go from one to the other to the other. Um, the story I tell quite a lot on my channel and in interviews is about I left Scientology and was out of Scientology for many years before I then realized I was still doing something in Scientology. And, and it was a tone scale thing, yeah, right? Yeah, um, I was talking to a friend of mine who was upset or angry, you know, ha not having a positive theta um, uh, conversation. And I realized in the moment, I don't know how or why, like I was kind of, I, I was doing some other stuff recovery wise anyway. I think it was just, it just clicked in my mind. Hold on. I'm not listening to what this guy is saying to me. Right? I'm sorry, I didn't because catch that. I said I'm not listening. Fucking with oh. you, Alex. Come on, your 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 British humor should should have been up to speed on that one. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I I was like I realized I'm not listening to this guy, and what I'm actually doing is he's angry or upset and what i'm trying to do is change his emotion so that he's not angry and upset because yeah. inside and exactly. the reason is in scientology if you're angry or you're upset or you're hostile or your resentment wherever you are that's like catherine said below 2.0 so therefore you are um the reactive mind is taking over right and the reactive mind and therefore you're not thinking logically and analytically you're thinking reactively and so even though I didn't believe in that anymore, I was still applying it because I was yes. instinctively trying to change this guy's emotions so that he wasn't angry and upset. So I was trying to get him to be not happy, but like get him so he wasn't angry and upset anymore. Yes. So that then we can talk about the problem that made him upset and angry and we can think exactly. logically and rationally right oh, so i didn't sick. believe in scientology i didn't believe in the principle behind it but i realized subconsciously what i was doing was trying to change the way he was behaving exactly. so that we could then talk about it rationally and so I, true. It, I, so I wasn't, it was, yeah. it was subconscious. I wasn't sat there thinking this guy's not thinking rationally. And so that, you know, 
I was just trying to do it. As soon as someone displayed that emotion, it was like it was just instinctive, right? Too. Change this person to a different level on the tone scale so that we can resolve it. And when I realized I was doing it six years after leaving Scientology, wow. that's when I realized that's what I mean about it going deep in your brain is you have taught yourself this and made it real. And even when you leave without knowing it, you're still going to be doing stuff. And that's why recovery takes a long time. That's really well said. And it's so embedded in our mind, which is part of the programming and why we do the courses over and over again. And that tone scale that I showed you guys, we actually sit up against, we have a chair and we look at a wall and we have to, by memory, repeat all of those so that we know them like the back of our mind. So like Alex says, we're doing it unconsciously. And the one thing that I've heard the most, I think, from exes is this tone scale that they don't even recognize how deeply, well, all of it, but specifically the tone scale goes in and how they're not actually listening to the person, they're manipulating them. And they often can go years, Alex, without even knowing that that's a part of Scientology. They're out, they think they're cured, but that's just step one. And then again, we're back to Catherine, you know, she's only been out for a couple of years, but I listened to the list of books that you've already read, which can be really helpful, right? And learning how this whole trick worked and getting some of that shit out of your head. Do you feel like that shit's, I mean, you're brand new out, Catherine. Do you, surely you still have a lot of these thoughts that are unpeeling oh, every day? Totally. Or Totally. And, it, and it, it, it really helps to talk about it like this because then you're like, yeah, yeah, I did that too. Like, like you see someone who's upset or they're, they're, they're crying or they're, you know, in, in like grief about something and you immediately want to go like, oh, I need to get them yeah. not upset anymore. And that's not, that's not right. Mm. That's not always correct. It's like, okay, how can you support this person? What can you do mm. to make them feel like it's okay what they're experiencing and if if they need any help fine help them through it if they you know if they want to take a walk take it for a walk but it's not like you don't have to have this compulsion to like oh my god they're upset you need to get them un unupset because their reactive mind is taking over and all this like bs that you mm -hmm. learn about real quick, Scientology Pete, teaches can I just address Pete real yeah. quick Pete, we covered her her story is all over YouTube she's done an interview with Alex this, right? and we're going to do one in the future she answers all of that and I can't I, just I can give this question for sure fast, please do so, so yeah I had I I had a phone I had a phone for a while um and then and then it got taken away and then I actually had an iPod iPods are great by the way because you can get Wi-Fi it's basically a phone. If you're on Wi-Fi, you have a phone. So, and it's not, it's not forbidden to have devices, but they can get taken away at any point and inspected and kept by, um, kept by the, the ethics officer or whatever. Wow. But I just, I kept mine on the, on the, on the DL and I, I got it taken once, which is kind of a funny story, but then it got given yes. back to me and and uh, it was fine, and nobody <laughs> found out what was going on. <laughs> I was shocked that you were even allowed to have that, because isn't that how Ron Miscavige Sr. was able to escape, too? I, yeah, I, I think so. Oh, yeah, because he had a Kindle. Mm -hmm. He was on the int base. I was never on the int base. I was one step below the int base. And then also, I was out in a Class 5 organization. Like, I was out in one of the city, city offices, like, 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 like where they actually deliver the services to the, to, to people out in the, out, out in the orgs. I was in Columbus and that, so things were a little bit more lax, but it was still like a Sea Org base. And, but, and I was also, I was also very trusted because I had been, oh, I was I a Sea Org member. Yeah. I never had anything, like I'd never had doubts, supposedly. I'd never blown. I never like had any like major, 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 you know, ethics situations or whatever. Because I just I I kept my head down and and stayed on the site as much as I could. <laughs> That's an if you guys want to hear her amazing story, you can watch it as Pete says on uh, Aaron's channel. Plus, she's done several other ones, but that's a forty-five minute one on Aaron. It's sh short and concise, and it's just mind bending. I kept rewinding that last night, Catherine. It took a couple hours to get through because it's yeah. just a it's kind of a unique story about how you got out. And how you were able to be helped out with a friend, which is absolutely beautiful. And yeah. again, I think you, you think you gave me some ideas about how to help people actually get out that are in, because that is the the one question I'm like, I couldn't yeah, like, get I couldn't get I my was, parents out, and they're public, you yeah. know. 
I was I can, speaking to somebody the other night who 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 uh, who is trying to he's trying to get his sister out. I actually know her. And so we were talking about different things. And I'm just like, you know, just just if when she comes to visit you, just, you know, in the gentlest way possible, ask her how she's doing. You know, is she happy? You know, like there's things you can ask that aren't like super threatening that can get somebody thinking about it at least. Hmm. Oh, that's so funny, Mark. <laughs> Asking questions is the way to help people recover. Yes. Right? Penetrating and questions, but not questions. Are are you in a cult? Did you know Aaron Hubbard was a yeah. liar? You have to so circumvent. You can't, yeah. them. you can't attack them and you can't attack exactly. Scientology because then they just they just shut down. Exactly. You know, the when I when I was saying that I I was kicked out and you know still considered myself a Scientologist for a couple of years afterwards and was doing extension courses and stuff and you know faded away, I suppose, and didn't consider myself a Scientologist for six years and then realized this situation I was talking about, right? Manipulating this person, right? What got me to that point of realizing I was doing it was people you know me doing therapy and stuff that wasn't necessarily related but when i did start seeing a specialist sort of support counselor person about it it was they were asking questions of like how does that make you feel and i'm like well i don't actually know because i sub like i, re I suppressed it for so long you're so used to you don't know what feelings are they, they're kind of well my feelings came back they were weird exactly. and the thing to understand as well like um, Scientology teach that emotions work in this very linear fashion and you move from one level to the next you you know it's a very scientific thing um, so in Scientology you get taught that in order to change in order to think about things rationally you have to move people up and down on this tone scale mm -hmm. and, and that is manipulating absolutely that is manipulation, but you don't realize it at the time no, and you when think you're you helping trying to change people's level on the tone scale and um, you are manipulated but you don't realize you're manipulating people and that's something i was doing for years after leaving and i never even realized and when i thought of it in that context of like hold on what i'm actually trying to manipulate someone's emotions here suddenly it's really easy to then stop doing that <laughs> but when that's you so don't funny. even realize that that's what you're doing it, that's that's the sort of effect i'm trying to get across with scientology is it makes people manipulative and it manipulates you yeah. but no one doing it is even aware that that's what it that's is 100 percent correct it objectively until you're out this is a great question, Roxy. And you know, there's a, I would say there's only a snag. There's one snag in this because you know what a Scientologist is going to say, because <clears throat> it's a great penetrating question. So what do you disagree with about Hubbard? What do you, is there anything that you find fault with in Scientology? Of course, a program Scientologist is going to say absolutely nothing, which is no, red Doug, flag sorry. number one. Please to, jump in. Go I have it. to disagree sure. there because sure. I know I was asked questions like this. I'm sure Catherine, you did as well in Div 6, right? As a public facing Scientologist, I was the director of public book sales. So I came across critics all the time and people uh -huh. asked me questions like this, right? What do you disagree with about Scientology? People trying to catch you out and trying to get you, you know, some people people come and try and get you to be a, like react in a certain way because they think it's funny mm -hmm. to us right. and some people genuinely try and help you and so questions like this all the time and i know i people wouldn't say absolutely nothing i would say something like when i was in scientology i would say like i disagree that um you know about the way we're disseminating i think it would be more effective to get the scientology message out by doing this right mm -hmm. or i disagree um that people think this about Scientology or I disagree that the, the Scientology um you know it might even be something like the way that you know, I would say I would use that one of like I I disagree that this, the way Scientology uses social media because I think well, that's an underutilized thing and we should use social media better because that's something that won't get me in trouble because I'm not actually talking about a Scientology principle or belief or anything that Owen Hubbard said. I'm telling you something that is the way something is done that won't get me in trouble, but it's still totally. a disagreement, but I'm not lying. You're I still skirting know. the question, though, because what the question is and, and what it's designed to penetrate is what do you disagree with about about Scientology, about L. Ron Hubbard and yeah. any cult member? And this is a huge red flag, guys. A program Scientologist, how I would have answered this question is nothing. The tech works. Why don't you try it for yourself? Yeah, Alex, I, Alex, I think it would depend on how long you've been in, how much yeah. indoctrination, and then also how savvy you are, because that's a savvy right. answer, right? 
I can tell you almost, if not a hundred percent, if not close to hundred percent of people in uh, London or that I ever met. And that included people who are third generation Scientologists, people who are um, in their seventies or were in their seventies and were joined Scientology when Aaron Hubbard was still alive would give a similar answer to me because, and I don't know if this is one of those things that London did differently, mm -hmm. but we were aware of this like perception people have of I Scientology. See. Right. So so we were actively trying to not come across as culty and weird. I and see. Creepy. So when someone would ask us, what do you disagree with about Scientology? We would think I've got to give them something, because if I say nothing, then they're going to think wow. that's a bit culty. Right? That's How very not interesting. Wow, I never I, so, ne I never did that. Actually, I didn't. So have, I never had anyone ask me what I disagree with. Me neither. But I know it's what not, I would have said as a it, public member. I'd say nothing. You should try. In fact, why don't you come down? I'll take you to the org and put you on the cans and show you what. Yeah. The, if there's nothing to disagree yeah, with. Because what you think, what you think is, oh, it works. It works 100 percent of the time yeah. on everybody um, without question. If if applied exactly, as long as they're not exactly you know, PTS SP. But I get what you're saying, Alex. That's it's, an it's interesting way line, to handle right? it. Yeah, it's a PR line. Like we thought in London, we thought with PR at the forefront because we're thinking, okay, what message is this sending to this person? If I say there's nothing, I disagree with it. You know, that could be perceived in this way. People might think this way. And we want Scientology to come across in the best way so i have to give them something right so that there's reality there's agreement between this person and me mm -hmm. because then once i've got them agreeing with me and we're on the same level then it's easier to sell them the book or it's easier to get them into the org and that conversation of come and find out for yourself you know get on the cans do a stress test buy the book read the book do a course that would still happen uh but we would all we would answer that in a way that was like well, yeah, there's obviously going to be things you disagree with, right? And and you have to find something, but it would never be about the tech, the policy, anything actually Scientology teaches. It would be kind of a way of avoiding the question, right? Because, yeah. yes, you're saying to yourself, there's nothing I disagree with because I 100% believe in Scientology and everything and I agree with everything. That mindset is still there, but you want to give something that, you know that can make it real to that person so you'll find something with like you were such a good salesman i, I could just see you in action brother <laughs> you're so good because yeah I, I get exactly what you're I, saying. I disagree with um you know how hard some people are trying and like there there's a small mission in sunderland that has bought their building they haven't gone ideal for it for for ages um you know i think some people don't try to apply scientology well enough or i think people aren't you know committed enough sometimes and i think actually if they were to apply scientology and be more enthusiastic and confident then they would get better results so i right. i disagree with that do you see what i mean it's yes it's, i do it's giving them something, but it's not disagreeing with Scientology. <laughs> no, it's very clever. Uh, you're one step ahead of me wow. because I wasn't even thinking about putting on a PR front. Um, mm -hmm. I was just like, I don't disagree with anything because you're not allowed to, you know, as you know, in the cold. And that also goes to show that like everybody's experience in Scientology is different, right? Exactly. And yeah, the majority exactly. of people might have one experience, but that doesn't mean other people don't. And that's why I'm doing my, oh, my is channel is to show that. And, and try and uncovering these things is that what i just said about the pr line and stuff like is that something that just we did in london because we were a bit different yeah or have I've, other I've, people I've, had a similar experience i i i've never I, I didn't do anything like that but also i never got that question me neither me neither no, I me but that. i know how i would that alone it. is interesting Can you go back to that one sure which one which one uh, uh, catherine uh, kimberly this, kimberly's we were told hey, it was not working. There was something that large group awareness. Oh. I think is that what's that's what that's for. That's fascinating. It's it's so fascinating how so much of these groups are just they just do exactly it. the exactly. same. Like literally, that's again why I push sociopaths on the channel. Once you learn that they all operate from the same playbook, you can take apart the tech in a, in a day. You don't yeah, have like, to. Like, I can oh, see the slant. You don't apply yeah. it. Exactly. You're not applying it right. Everything that Hubbard said is what. And the answer is given about how everything's correct. I'm never wrong. These are traits of a sociopath, you know. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever read the Sociopath Next Door or Snakes I'm not, and Suits? I'm actually listening to the oh. audiobook right now. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Mike uh recommended that several times, so I decided. It's to a great that. book. 
I, I highly cool. recommend Snakes yeah. and Suits and The Sociopath Next Door to get a crash course in uh, sociopathy. Yeah. And they're all run by narcissists, all destructive cults. So those two put together can, I think, deprogram people a lot faster. Totally. Alex, we've been going for two fucking hours, man. It's one. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just the time flies. Is there anything that you guys... We'll take a couple of questions before we roll out, but is there anything we missed or that we hit upon? Now, we did cover, I think, the tone scale with the showing the little thetans and everything. We showed the chart of human evaluation. We even defined it at the very beginning, and we ran Scientology's video on it. So even though it's still confusing, guys, I think we did hit upon a freaking tone scale video, which yeah. is long overdue. And we can do a part two on this if you guys want to, too, to go even more into sure. it. But I, I personally found that fascinating, man. Yeah, sure. it, is, it, is, it is fascinating, definitely. Yeah, me too. I think there are two There are two questions in the, the chat that I I would like to kind of comment on. Sure, let me know and I'll pull them up, bro. Oh, no, they were like ages ago now because okay. I was trying to – I didn't want to cut you guys off. Um, mm -hmm. Lorna Hardison said, Alex, they have specialist therapists in the UK. You at question mark. US bites when it comes to good therapy in general, let alone for cult deprogramming and recovery. Well, you know, um, there's a – there's a. I saw I, – I spoke to a therapist shortly after I came out, and it's actually – her name is uh, Rachel Bernstein. Oh, yeah. She's fabulous. She is she's, so good because she's helped – she's helped ex-Scientologists and ex -Sierra I know, Mike. specifically. She knows – everything like she knows about Scientology. So I feel like any therapist you go to, you have to like explain so much. I know I did that with three of them, Catherine. That's why it's so important to find a cult yeah. expert. And yeah, and the, the gal you're talking about is an expert in Scientology. Yeah. She's helped yeah, out many. Ex really you went, you went to see her. I, or well, talk I to talked her, to her on the phone. Yeah. I, I, I talked to her on the phone. Rachel she's Bernstein. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I the what I the experience I had was I was seeing a therapist about something completely different, not related to, to Scientology at all. And it mm -hmm. got to the point where I was like struggling to like process and deal with emotions. He was like, you, in order for us to like work with how you feel about things, you kind of need to like be able to recall and f and experience emotions and feel them in the room so we can work with them. And I just couldn't do it. And it was because I was suppressing emotions so much because of Scientology. And like I was explaining Scientology things to him and it kind of, it, it was very helpful to go to this therapist about this other thing. But um, when I started to um, unpack, unpick the Scientology stuff, it's like, well, there's only so much benefit a therapist can give you that isn't a specialist in that area because there is so much and you have to do so much explaining of principles for even a trained therapist to understand like what what the effect is on your brain so oh, going sorry. to a therapist that understand Scientology and has you know has been not necessarily been a Scientologist but someone that has actually studied it and gets uh, it is really helpful so yes. when I then went to a specialist counselor who was a, a specialist in coercive groups and like cults and coercive control and like all of this sort of thing it was the most relieving thing to be able to like talk about a Scientology principle or technique um and not have to explain it because it kind of opened the door in my brain of like, great, I can, I, I can make so much more progress in this yeah. one hour session because I'm not sat here explaining Scientology principles because they exactly. get it. Exactly. That's they what understand I understand how it works in my brain. They didn't even know the psychologist I went to see. They didn't even know about cult mind control. They didn't even know the word mind control was a thing. It's mm -hmm. like, I had to break out Steve Hassan's book to the three that I went to, to start there. And I'm finally like, Oh, fuck it. I'm just going to do auto psychotherapy. I'll work it out myself by simply reading all the material. Guys, we have some really good questions coming in if you don't mind yeah, hit, hitting real quick. About, about uh, AA and stuff like that. Yeah, I wanted to pull that up if you don't mind. That was the uh, second the second comment I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, I really think on those, like, I think the best thing to look at is is Steve Hassan's. I have it right here. I, I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that because that's such a great question. And I have my own opinions about that and yeah. yeah i would say you know look into yeah. the bite model and because, also chris because... shelton makes a good has made a good point several times is it's, it's like there can be like all these different like cult type groups and whatever but is it is it destructive is it exactly people? that's is the it, point it, that's like, the point exerting this ultimate control over every aspect of your life and how do you tell that guys it's so simple steve just made this brilliant model where you, it, every point doesn't have to be present, but take AA, take um, transcendental, transcendental meditation, take any of these things, that, take Mormonism, since people want to debate about that. That's absolutely a destructive cult, but I got a lot of heat, you know, 
for talking about that. If you want to just cut through the bullshit, run any group through this and ask yourself, do they regulate individual physical reality? Do they dictate where, how, and with whom the member lives? Information control. And I know you guys can think of many examples oh, yeah. on this on the world stage. Do they minimize or discourage access to non-cult source of information? Do they compartmentalize information? On and on. So this is a great model, guys. And it's in the episode called Scientology Bites on my channel. A link to this and other information. Scientology well. Bites, is that what it's called? That's what I called it, yeah. <laughs> right. I think that there's nothing wrong. Like, this is one thing to understand. There's nothing wrong with things being a bit cultish or a bit culty, right? Destructive that, is the question. Because, yeah. yeah, that's the, the main thing. Everyone or, or a, a, lot, a lot of people, I'm sure, will be able to relate to, you know, a sports club, people at a gym, right? Different things like this yeah. where people can get a bit obsessed with it and a bit passionate about it. Which and is nothing wrong with that you know, is it destructive people in a different yeah. way or, or um you know people might say oh you you seem a bit different when you're around these people and you know that's that's kind of culty behavior and things like aa and na i know exactly what they're talking about there of yeah. like you but know are they trying to are, like do they fit the rest of the model are they trying exactly to are you do yeah. you have to take away from your family are they asking a norman they sound yeah. an enormous amount of money to go through secret levels that change is it structured like a pyramid yeah. Again, like it, I, I think that model is just brilliant for cutting through all yeah. of the BS. Also, and by the way, real quick, this is a great book too thing. to add Good. to the psychopath uh, stuff. I just wanted to say that without conscience also is to be added to snakes, snakes and suge and the sociopath next door yeah. to understand narcissistic cult leaders. Please. Continue. Also, I was just going to say the key difference is that like coercive control, right? That's the main yes. thing. Things yeah. can be a bit culty. Things can be a bit weird or a bit whatever. But the key is is the group trying to coercively control you or control yeah. the person and that's what makes something different between being like culty or a bit cultish and being a coercive group right and there are a lot of things yeah. that are a bit culty that aren't necessarily coercive groups right think about any major religion right there are things that do seem a bit weird and there are people who take it to you think christianity for example there are people who donate like um kind of uh commit their lives to christianity and be monks and nuns and that's taking right. the belief to the extreme yeah. but is the church trying to coercively control them right it, some people would say yeah, yeah or, but or, or, that's such a great or, point you're bringing right. up we Can I take this up from TL real quick? Because I don't want to. I don't want to ignore the super chats if you don't mind. Because they kind of the, the the chat moves fast. Can I just cover this real quick, guys? But let's pick up that point before we end off because this is such a great discussion. TL, thank you, really appreciate it. And yeah, I feel you when you say the tone scale was the one piece of supposed quote unquote tech. It took me the longest to dismiss. You're not alone. I actually have um, a couple of people that have I've talked to that are exes. This, this is the main thing that's been a problem and stuck with them. Yeah. One of them is in sales, probably a couple of decades. Great topic to cover. Thanks. And we'll, I think we'll cover this even more and we're going to break down all the tech because this is real, where the real juice is. We'll show you how, you know, with the ethics technology and the various scales, the yeah. DEI scale decision enforce inhibit. We'll show you all this crap that we were learning. So people don't go, Oh, what a bunch of nutters, but there is actually some, he stole everything, guys. So there is some good information. But again, because you're dealing with the sociopath, he ensnared it to bend it all towards his will. Yeah. So thanks for that, TL. Um, please continue. I didn't want to ruin the discussion that we were on. We were talking about AA. Is it cult? Oh, yeah. The key would, point I, being, is it destructive? Yeah. yeah I, and also, I think the other point is like these these super secret confidential upper levels. And you look at different groups that have that, like, like, like the Mormons have it, the... I think like Je the Jehovah Witnesses have definitely, like and and of course Scientology has it. So it's like I feel like personally, if you can't lay out everything about a subject and say this is everything we believe, you know, take it or leave it. Like 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 the Bible, for example, you can read the entire Bible. There's nothing. There's mm -hmm. nothing secret about it. Mm -hmm. You can read everything That's they right. believe, and you can go, okay, right. I agree or I don't agree, or I want to believe this or not. It's not like it's being like withheld. There's not information being withheld from you or hidden, or exactly. you have to reach this level before you exactly. can do this. And it's just like, mm. Why? It, there's also an element of totalitarianism in there like if you think about the christian faith and there are lots of different factions and different ways of interpreting the bible and so on and different you know parts of or, or churches will interpret things in a different way but that's the key thing right no one 
it kind of will tell you you're interpreting the Bible wrong, or maybe they will in some factions. But the whole point is it's open to interpretation. and You right. apply it how you want to right. and make it real for you. And therefore, right. it's not you're not ever told you're wrong or right, or you are very much in control of it. Whereas in Scientology, they make you feel like you're the one in control because you're the one looking at situations and applying the tone scale and saying, yeah, well, I can see that this is correct. So you feel like you're the one doing it. Right. But in actual fact, the whole concept and teachings of Scientology are not up for interpretation because you follow the policy and it's correct 100% of the time if you apply it correctly and so it's not open no, it's not. to different <laughs> interpretations exactly. yeah and then when it doesn't make sense it's not because the policy is wrong or you've interpreted it wrong it's because you've got a misunderstood word or you're you've done something wrong against the church like and that is one of the key differences I think between yeah. like a cult and something that's culty is like well it's totalitarian it's a hundred percent it's this way or it's nothing it's a hundred percent or you're in or you're out yeah. whereas when you are allowed to interpret text and make up your own decision about it it's a lot less culty um was there a super chat i there? just wanted to say uh how do you pronounce that is that C -O C -O C -O oh that's so funny <laughs> what a great what a great moniker <laughs> sending super chatter to being downstat all week thank you so much and we've been downstat too so thank you for helping us get our stats up with that yes friend. thank you for the super chat um, one one thing on that point alex real quick because mm. this is this comes up all the time more than anything else about oh all religions are cults and you know that's not actually true because again if you throw it through the the bite model where we're looking at the the key word is destructive is it taking you away from your family? Is there a hierarchy? Are the levels secret? As Catherine pointed out, in Christianity in your local church, from zero to nine, we were Christians. I would go down to you know Sunday school. We were loose Christians. I could come and go. There was no forcing. And all their tenets, cosmology, and beliefs were in the freaking Bible, if you want to know. Yeah. So there is a difference, in my opinion. I, I would call... Maybe you could call it like brainwashing light or whatever. It depends on your particular, whatever you think of religion. That's what I would call it because I can see things similar, but I don't call them a destructive cult because that they're not according yeah. to the experts in this field. Yeah. I think that's a really important distinction, by the way, because they're not all the same. You can leave your basic church on Sunday yeah. school, but you can't freaking leave Scientology. Right. Just ask yeah. Catherine. Yeah. There's somebody, somebody here says, I left the cat glitter, glitter flutter by Glitter flutter by. That's great. I left the Catholic church at, church at 16 oh. and nobody was sent out to recover me. <laughs> Who said that, by the way? I would like to pull that up. Glitter, Glitter flutter, flutter by. by. Who? Yeah. Glitter flutter by. Okay. What a great I know. moniker. Hey, Glitter. I left the Catholic church at 16 and nobody was sent out to recover me. Yeah, exactly. And, and the Catholic church can be accused of many, many crimes, as we know. I don't want to say the word on YouTube because they'll whatever. But, you know, they're infamous. It doesn't mean that um, they're they're free of all problems. It just means, like she says, you're free to come and go. To me, that's a huge, huge difference. It's funny. I was out on that when I was out book selling one time uh, in Columbus. I ran into this um, Christian pastor, and and he was like, "Hey, what do you got there?" And I was showing. He was like, "Wow, you got you got all these books to explain explain your religion. That, that, that that's a lot of books." And he's like, "I just got one book." <laughs> I was like. Hmm, interesting he's like yeah you can check it out anytime i think this is a good place to end off guys because the chat's just going off the chains the questions are awesome somebody mentioned we should take up aa and stuff in the future and break that down absolutely we can and like i said we'll be covering because i think we found our little niche here we'll be bringing special guests on I'm sure we'll have Catherine back and we'll show you these scales and we'll show you what we yeah. learned um because yeah, we, we have a whole book of scales yeah and this is great guys because you know what i try to make these videos you know on the series and they just take forever to edit and like i said you know i'm halfway through the freaking tone scale one they take forever to edit but a discussion about it where we can bring it all up and have yeah. multiple people breaking this down i don't think there's too much content on the fucking meat of scientology scientology geek by the way does do these breakdowns she's definitely subscribed to her channel and she does a you know she does this kind of thing um, so I just think this is really good so people can see what the hell we're actually learning rather than going, what a bunch of fucking idiots for believing in Xenu, you know? Yeah. I didn't believe um, in Xenu. I didn't know anything about Xenu. That, yeah. That's, the oh, yeah. I never, I didn't get to the OT levels. As soon as I found out what the OT levels were, I was like, this, uh, no, I'm done. No. Nope. This is a good thing that you didn't get there because it ripped my freaking mind apart, Catherine. Can you imagine believing in that stuff? No. Oh, my God. Yeah, actually. 
yeah, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. And, and yeah, um, thank you. Julia, yeah, it's always good to see you. Catherine, yeah, thank you for um for coming on and, and being yeah, our guest. And this seriously, is exciting. It'll awesome. be great to have you have you on again, not just Thursdays at two, but have you on as a guest on Doug's channel and on my channel. Like there's so yeah. much, oh, as yeah. I said, there are so many people yeah. commenting saying, When's Catherine gonna be back? I really love Catherine <laughs> and asking about you. She's and very uptone. <laughs> you're definitely a, at least at serenity of being this, maybe <laughs> hanging around postulates. I don't see action. I think you're definitely hanging around in the 30 to 40 range, which is uh, remarkable considering you got out of Scientology and you should be at one. Yeah, range. that's yeah. that that's that's how it is, you know. That's yeah. what happens when you get out. You can you can actually be happy. So yeah. awesome, Catherine. I'm so <laughs> happy that you've joined us on the outside. And isn't it isn't it yeah. such a better world? We're not all a bunch that's of evil awesome. SPs like they no, program us. Not at all. And just one final YouTuber creator plug to like, go for it, Alex. You're, you're the I man to lot, do this, please. Better you than I me. It, I know I say it a lot, but the way of supporting channels and making them grow is engagement. If you if you engage with a like and a comment, and if you share it and you subscribe, it YouTube will push the video out to more people, and therefore it will get more exposure. Videos get more views based on how much people engage with them. So like, comment, share, like, and subscribe. We, we do mean it when we say, because that is the best way of mm -hmm. helping. But both of both Doug and I have coffees as well. If you want to buy us a coffee, there's oh, a right. the description. But as I said, the best way of doing it, we're not in it for the money. Best way is sharing, subscribing, commenting, and all of that. And thank you for, for coming oh. along and joining in the chat and everything. Thank yeah. you. And since you did a shameless plug, I might as well throw this up to show people what the hell we're talking about. This is a channel that both Alex and I have. He has like a UK version, but it's a way to just, you know, you can buy a coffee or you can become a member and stuff. That's, oh, that's the best cool. way to help out the channel financially. But really, we want the information out there and all that. We have to work around YouTube and we have to work with what we got. This is the part I personally don't like about this platform, but everything else, being able to speak out, literally save people's lives from cult, it's a beautiful thing. And it's so awesome having you, Catherine. I can't wait to speak. Yeah, it was great. Future, this is fantastic. I'll and everybody in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut your comm. Sorry. I'm trying to go overboard when I get out of Scientology and learn how to cut people's comm to get out <laughs> the programming of waiting. Sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Did no, you wanna... I was just saying it was great to be here, and I'll definitely come Thank back. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. And guys in the chat, you're freaking awesome, and I you have me cackling the whole time. So until we see you, oh, Friday tomorrow, I'll be live with Marcus, and we're going to be discussing some very controversial subjects and hopefully simmering down the Scientology infighting and breaking down that Danny Masterson retrial. So join me and Marcus tomorrow. In the meantime, guys, um, love you all, and stay cult-free out there. Please, will you? <laughs>